Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. Your call to Neil, call 5670560 toll free for Dave and Broward or pound 560 on your cell phone. The opinions of Neil, his guests, callers, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast Group. Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560 QAM. I like the wee wee. Three at five sixty WQ. I'm happy Wednesday to you. Wow, what a great day for the Irish man. Oh. I'm not really sure why. John McCain is he Irish? No. Well, whatever the hell he is. Look at that Georgie W. Boy, sure got problems, doesn't he? Uh-huh. Sure, he just couldn't win a fixed election, except for those yahoos in South Carolina spending about thirty million dollars, whatever they spent. But at any rate, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. We're really heavily politically these days, aren't we? No. No. Anyway, speaking of our poll. This is great. I hope that Beefo is still in the building with the monitor up real loud. Do you think he's listening? No. Beefo, who's got his head way up John Henry's ass. Correct him. We asked on our poll question on our website, neilrogers.com, yesterday, would you approve of spending tax dollars for a new baseball stadium in South Florida? Yes or no? 41 people said. Yes. 344 people said. No. 385 votes. That's pretty heavy duty. In about 22 hours. That's not too bad. 89.3% said no. And only 10.6% said, said yes. like I said. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. How do you like that? You haven't got a Chinaman's chance in purgatory, John Henry. Let me tell you that right now. No matter how much Beefo sucks your ass, I noticed this morning in the show he's sucking Greg Cote's ass. It must be, February must be ass sucking month for Beefo, you think? Uh-huh. It must be. He's sure getting in his licks, I'll tell you that. Even Sister Jean ain't getting as many, I don't think. 344 to 41. So the obvious question is, is it even worth wasting the tax dollars to print just for the ink, to print it on the ballot, to put that on there, assuming that they would get the uh, signatures that they needed this November? Which I don't, I don't see anything going on about that either, do you? Have we seen any petition drive going on or anybody talking about putting that on the ballot? I don't know what the deadline might be, but uh, I sure don't see anything going on about it. No. No. So don't even waste your time, John Henry, because you have two chances of getting the public to go along with uh, tax dollars to build you a new baseball stadium. None and much, much less than none. Zero. There is abs- First of all, there's no interest in the Marlins anyway. And secondly, the public finally is caught on. I think that this past July... July of 99, I think we finally saw the public starting to wake up and sniff the daffodils when they give a big resounding no. No to Mayor Pinga Pequena and his penny uh, uh, sales tax for his metro fail and all this other uh, pseudo-transportation crap. They said, uh, stick it up your ass, Alex. And I think he did is what I'm hearing. 
And I think that was the beginning of a long series of negatory votes every time they try to pull the woolly over our eyes again and peddle the public a bunch more tax crap. And by the way, I just point out in passing that they still owe $40 million on the old Miami arena, the white elephant that's sitting there four blocks away from the new Mickey Harrison arena. And when I read George the uh, thing from the uh, Herald editorial this morning that I'm going to read in a second here, he, you know, immediately popped up with the right answer, and that is that Mickey Arison owns the Herald Block Stock and Barrel. And that is absolutely... Absolutely correct, sir. Correct. That's why the Herald is so anti-gambling. That's why the Herald is so goody-two-shoes. That's why the Herald was so in favor of that American Airlines arena and every other goddamn thing that Mickey Arison wants. They have no problem at all with a man who siphons the money out of this community. He's like a drain, like a nonstop drain, sucking the blood, like a vampire on Dade County, sucking the lifeblood out of this town, contributing absolutely nothing, nothing, zero, zippity doo -dah. And it's really interesting how they keep putting these articles, uh, you know, very right, righteously about, well, well, you know, the Sun, the Sun Cruise to three and this one and that one. All these other gambling ships are evil. But whatever Mickey does, that's okay. Are these people kidding anybody with a brain? No. Are they fooling anybody? No. And, of course, we all remember when they were in bed with Mickey Harrison and Mayor Pinga Pequena putting this thing over on the public. And again, another one of these bogus elections, if you're against it, vote uh, yes, and if you're for it, vote no. They twisted the verbiage on it, and the whole thing didn't uh, smell right anyway. It was kind of like screwing. <laughs> Something didn't smell right. And put the wool over the eyes of the public again with the help of, uh, what was the one's name? The, uh, Tony Ritter. Who, who, isn't it interesting that he also has flown the coop now? They all run off to the Silicon Valley over there, the Herald people. They screw up this town, and they, they do their little... Droppings all over us, and then they kind of vanish. But I thought that David J. Neal's comments yesterday about Mike Vernon and the Herald were the worst that I could ever possibly read, but the Herald never lets you down. They never disappoint. After we do the break, I'm going to read just very briefly, take about 30 seconds, from their lead editorial this morning. This is the worst swill, and this should tell you everything you need to know about where the Herald is coming from. You are fooling absolutely nobody, you grave-robbing bastard, you. And by the way, to see what tremendous clout you've got, and they also endorsed, by the way, remember they endorsed Mayor Pinga Pequena's penny sales tax, and the public said, no. stick it up your ass, and then they wrote that editorial chastising the public. Oh, yeah, well, you didn't go along with it, so you're going to wind up a screwed sitting there on the highway, and, -bada 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 and the public said, <coughs> to you, okay? That's what they said. <coughs> you could hear it. To the Herald, because that's one thing that most of us have in common, no matter what else, where we came from, what religion, what ethnic, what anything, schleppers, millionaires, anybody with a brain hates the Herald, oh! because they suck. And that radio station they were promoting on their front page with Barry Jackass, yeah, how are they doing? They show up in the ratings yet? No. Six months later? No. No, not one diary. Here we are. It's the, uh, late February. Of the year 2000, they put that format on August 1st. Barry Jackass had a 500-part series promoting that radio station to try to knock us down. Put it on the front goddamn page of the Herald. Not one diary, any demographic, any day part, any anything. They don't exist. So your time is up, you assholes over there at the Herald. You're fooling nobody. But this editorial today, frame it, save it, savor it, lick it. That too. It's 10 after 10 at 560 WQM. No portion of this broadcast may be reproduced without the express written permission of WQAM. No. We read Acquisition Court. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Georgie Bush says that his nose is clean and never put stuff in it. Because he's running for the White House, so he just can't admit it. Stone drunk and that's not all. He even down a few speedballs. In college any drug would do. He even dropped some message too. Why won't Georgie just come out and simply say he did it? He prefers the press would shut their mouth. But it's none of your goddamn business. He did more than what you think. 
but he washed it down the sea. Does he prefer cocaine to hash? That's the question that he does. Can he make his point much clearer? Like a razor on a mirror. But he wants us to believe that he didn't do anything. George is bushed up and his nose is clean. He never puts stuff in it because he's running for the White House. So he's just dancing with me. George is clean. George is clean. George is clean. George is clean. <laughs> 1015 at 560 WQM. Come on, one more time. Anyway, he's got real problems, Georgie. In fact, the Republican Party, they're kind of like self-destructing before our eyes. Because this whole deal yesterday, which they're the ones that set up the rules. And then some of them, like John Engler there in Michigan, well, maybe I made a mistake, but I mean, but I will. And, well, that's the way it goes. When you set up a Republican primary and 51% of the people who come out and vote are independents and Democrats, and a lot of them hate John Engler like poison, the governor of Michigan. And also a lot of them are coming out to screw up the whole thing in the first place. Then uh, you got nobody to blame but yourselves. Interesting point, by the way, before I get to that brilliant Herald editorial. 22 states uh, have primaries between now and the end of March. 12 have the same open rules as Michigan. But unlike Michigan, all of those states hold simultaneous Democratic primaries. And McCain will not only have to face Bush, but also Bradley and Gore, et cetera, and so on for the Democrats' independence. And he's got no chance with them. That's, in other words, it's a whole different ball of wax. In addition to which, California and New York, do they have the same rules? No. No. So most of the delegates there are going to go to Bush, barring some unforeseen miracle. Now the Republicans are getting real antsy because they realize that McCain is a far better candidate than Bush against Gore in November, but uh, McCain's probably not going to win the the, uh, nomination. So they're between a rock and a hard place because they got Georgie W. And they're finding out that everybody hates Georgie W. like poison except Pat Robertson, and that's another reason why more and more people hate George W. is because of Pat Robertson. And those phone calls. And because Pat Robertson's, uh, well, you know what he is. He's an asshole. Although, let's point out again that Gary Bauer endorsed John McCain. I just mentioned that in passing. For those who really believe that John McCain is uh, reformed and this and that and moderate and the reformer, et cetera, and so on. Right. But not, nevertheless, I like John McCain only because he's the one that's standing in George E.W.'s way. And helping and also pushing George E.W. farther and farther and farther to the extreme right. And people are saying, oh, oh, my God. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We want Pat Robertson to be vice president. Anyway, so here in the Herald today, a questionable bet. You know, these people, you should only rot in hell at the Herald. There are probably some nice people who work there. My good friend Howard Kleinberg writes a column there, but not too often. Thank God for that. I hope Howard doesn't have to go in the building to write it. Proposed Florida Sports Authority is what this editorial is about. I almost didn't read it, but I'm so glad that I did. I just pick a couple of parts here to let you know what this is all about. It says, this breathtakingly ambitious but seriously flawed bill is the work of State Representative Luis Rojas and Senator Roberto Casas. He's an asshole. Republicans from Hialeah. If it is to become law at all during the upcoming legislative session, it should do so in a much humbler form. And here we go. I want you to listen very, very carefully. It says, there are flaws in the measure, the biggest of which may be to put Florida into the paramutual business as owner of the storied but dying highly erased course. The financial base of the Florida Sports Authority seems to be paramutual betting profits that in proposer's dreams alone would pay for stadiums and other things. And here comes the greatest sentence in the history of journalism, and I use that term loosely, journalism. (laughs) It's bad enough that the state sanctions gambling in any form. But horse racing is a foundering business, with highly in particular showing dismal handles in recent years. The likelihood of it producing profits for taxpayer owners is a long shot no gambler would take. And at the end it says, promoting sports is a worthy venture, but let's not allow state government to plunge into the racing business. End of what I'm going to read from it. First of all, the uh, state already is in the racing business. I hate to break the news to you because they're partners with all the pair mutuals. They take, they take their uh, share. They take their percent which is the only reason they allow the parimutuals to exist in the first place, and it's been that way for about 6,000 years. But don't confuse the Herald with that. They're already in a racing business. But this line, to go back to that paragraph, that line, just write it down. Get you a crayon right now and write it on your on your arm, on your sleeve, somewhere, and don't ever forget it. If, if by some miracle, casino gambling should ever come up as an issue on a ballot again here, which I doubt, but if it ever should, and these people start pontificating and lecturing again, just remember that sentence in today's Miami Herald, February 23, 19, uh, 2,500, whatever it is. It's bad enough that the state sanctions gambling in any form. 
Are you ready for that? Unless, now they must. They certainly couldn't be talking about like bingo, like for uh, church bingo. No, oh, that's okay. Church bingo. As long as the Pope's got his finger in it. That's gambling for God. As long as he's got his finger in it and the uh, ga- and the uh, gambling too. Rectum. Yeah. It's bad enough that the state sanctions gambling in any form. Every day of my life, practically, I pick up my two yokel papers and I read crap, and it just it, it makes me just wonder what kind of people are in this town. Then I come in here on the air and do the show, and then of course I it reinforces my memory comes back, and I realize what kind of people <laughs> are in this town. It's bad enough that the state sanctions gambling in any form. And so you wonder, these crazy goody two shoes people, who, by the way, can't can't take enough ads for all those cruise ships that they're uh, you know always uh, ripping in because you know, they're not Mickey's, can't take enough money to promote that crap. And their line always is, well, you know, we separate the editorial pages from the goddamn uh, news pages. In other words, we're a bunch of prostitutes, we're a bunch of whores. See, on this show, I'm the one that'll tell you we're a bunch of whores in the broadcasting business, and we're proud of it. That's what we are. Although on this station, we go a little bit too far. We're embarrassed by it. But nevertheless, we're a bunch of whores. But these people, they're in the newspaper business. No, they're in the advertising business and the brainwashing business. Those are the two businesses that they're in. They're in a self-serving business. You've heard of places where it's self-serve? Well, that's how it is at the Herald. Everything they do is self-serving. Everything is designed to feather their own nest. Whether it's they're sucking up to uh, the Hispanic community without any success, by the way. Hispanics hate them like poison. Well, whatever it is, it's always for their own benefit. Just like that business sucking up with uh, with Tony Ritter and Mickey Harrison and the uh, Mayor Pinga Pequena because, uh, oh, yeah, we got to renovate downtown because one Herald Plaza just happens to be down, down there in a very dangerous and dilapidated part of town. So whatever is good for the Herald, that's what's good for us is what they would have us believe. Does anybody believe that? No. No. Just like this poll on John Henry. 385 votes. 344 no, 41 yes. The public is screaming from the rooftops, no, cut the crap. That's what they're screaming. But gambling, oh my God, can you imagine a more grotesque, horrendous, outrageous, dangerous place than Las Vegas, for example, a more decadent, a more tenth world. Oh, that's right. We're the ones that are decadent in tenth world and really uh, <coughs> dangerous and blowing everybody away all the time without all those other forms of gambling. See, I just, I just can't relate to that. I cannot relate living in a community that is run by a bunch of Neanderthals living in the Stone Age. And you got Bobby Butterworth and Ken Jenny. There's no hope for this state. It's hopeless. The lost cause. That's why if you want to have a good time, get on a plane, on a boat, or something, and go somewhere. Just go somewhere where you're allowed to have a good time, where they're not working 28 hours a day to try to make damn sure that you don't have a good time. It's bad enough that the state sanctions gambling in any form. What a sentence. Didn't they just open up casinos in Detroit last time I checked? Uh Uh-huh. And in Mississippi, uh-huh. and in every other guy in Biloxi over there, uh-huh. and all over America, and most of the places, not all of them, but most of them, they're raking money hand over his limp wrist. But we can't have that here because the Herald says it's evil. Evil. Here's a mobile. Oh, look at that. I pressed up mobile in Miami, and all of a sudden, it I turned black. Like it's- Oh, well, I thought we weren't going to have to Oh, do that that's anymore. what I thought. That's why I didn't Oh, know. it's been sitting on there. Look at that. We got more phone problems again today. How do you like that? And, of course, I was told that that computer wasn't part of our phone problem. Isn't that what they told me? Uh-huh. That because they're too cheap to buy a goddamn... And, by the way, didn't I say when I left here yesterday the number 11 was going through my mind? Uh-huh. Yeah. And guess what? I look on our uh, website, and then, of course, I look at my computer checking the market uh, numbers yesterday. And there was a stock, I can't mention which one, that looked like it was at 11 seven, and 7 eighths. How do you like that? So whoever was on here, you'll have to call us back again, okay, because our phone is screwed up again today, and we have to reset it and re around with it because that computer in there is a piece of crap, which we shouldn't have to go through all of this. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay. 
First of all, your poll is 344 to 1, because remember you said Defo only allowed 40 yeah, votes. Yeah, Defo probably voted 20 times. <laughs> Listen, what do you think about the Panthers' chances against Washington tonight, huh? Well, well, what kind of a question is that, sir? Well, what does that mean? What well, do I think about they've their been chances? Playing, their defense has been playing pretty bad but, lately. But what kind of a question is that? What do I think about their chances? Well, what, what does that mean? Well, your honest opinion, the way they're playing. I, I don't. I have no idea. On a given day, that's why they play the games. If we already knew ahead of time, they wouldn't waste the time because somebody might get hurt. That's true. Like Donald Brashear, somebody might get injured. Uh, alrighty. Okay. Thanks. Th that's it. That's a medley of the response here this morning in the first half hour. Is that what do I think of their chances? Like I just got through saying, all, all I have to do is uh, repeat what I just got through saying. Just keep playing it on an endless loop over and over again. It's hopeless. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Strawberry in trouble again. Oi! How do you like that? I think that's an interesting thing we ought to ponder. Although I'm sure we won't get any response about that. How many chances does does uh, one get? How many chances does a professional athlete get? And then, of course, there's the Joe Rose thing in Josie Lambie's column again for the 85th time. You know, Josie, you've only had this in there like 400 times about the little dog and Cecil, and the little dog said this, and this one said that. And uh, Come on, come up with something new and fresh and disgusting and really meaty, okay, like, uh, you know, about Troy Eggman and his boyfriend eating at Joe's the other night. Then we'll read your column, Josie. Come up with something new and exciting. Not about the little dog said this and little dog said that. Yankee outfielder Daryl Strawberry tested, uh, tested positive for cocaine on January 19 and might once again be suspended from baseball. A high-ranking baseball official speaking on the condition he not be identified said Tuesday the commissioner's office is investigating and the decision whether to take disciplinary action likely would be made by tomorrow at the latest. Strawberry is tested two or three times a week as part of his no-contest plea May 26, 1999, the charges of cocaine possession and soliciting a prostitute. He was sentenced to 18 months of probation and 100 hours of community service. He already has served two drug-related suspensions, the first for 60 days in 1995 after he testified positive for cocaine. The second from April 24th to August 4th last season came after he was arrested in Tampa last April 4th for possessing cocaine. And here we go again. How many chances do they get? Two, three hundred sound good? Uh -huh. Okay. I'm just checking. QAM drops the green flag with Motorsports Saturday. Saturday mornings at 6 with Joe Costello. Right here on Sports Radio 560. QAM. Neil Rogers. Hi. Let me take you down to Yankee Stadium where Strawberry Field While making drug deals And nothing seems to dry them out Strawberry Rehab forever Living is easy for sports pros Put the fannies in the seat. A superstar can get messed up, but he can still cash out. If he can hit 293. <laughs> and he won't come down, cause he loves his tooth when strawberry fields. He's making drug deals. As long as he can hit him out, strawberry stash that forever. Now when he's swinging at strike three, I'll bet he must be high on blow. And all the little kids will think that it's all right to get real high and grab a bat. Let me take you down to Yankee Stadium where Strawberry Fields While making drug deals They're never gonna kick him out Strawberry Rehab forever 
strawberry rehab forever. He'll probably relapse forever. Del Sabe. Look, cool, man, I told you they could call me to the game. Hey, look, I thought you had to go with the fly ball coming. All right, I'll call you later. <laughs> I never really thought of George W. and uh, Daryl in the same, you know, in the same thing before. But I guess now maybe, uh -huh. yeah, they might have something in common. They both be in trouble, I think. Ten thirty four at five sixty WQM. Look at this phone this morning. Now we had four or five of them on there for a second, and then they decided, well, we don't think so. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line, out of town line eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. Here's our lone, lonely call in Hialeah. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. It's not the uh, the call. It's just the phone because I've been waiting for about uh, 10 minutes the first time, and uh, the phone kicked me out. No, no. Well, we had to do that because uh, we had to, because our computer screwed up. I see. No, it is the callers. There are no callers. Oh, You're okay. It. You're the only call I've got. You're the only it. caller. And you know, I feel very honored. You're the only one that's got the balls to pick up the phone and wait uh, twice. Exactly. And tell you it's bad enough that the state sanctions gambling in any form. How about the Florida lottery? Oh yeah, isn't that? I mean, that is the state, right? And well, that's not gambling, is it? I. It's only, the, it's only the worst bet in the history of the human race. You got a one in fifty billion chance. Exactly. Yeah. Talking about the Herald, I could not agree with you. Uh, what a piece of crap this newspaper is. Uh, while you were away, this alien drunken the uh, drunken uncles of alien. Yeah. The news. Uh, well, the story was. Uh, Brought out to the to the front page by the New York Times, and also Carnival, the, all the wrongdoings by Carnival. Mm -hmm. This was brought to the attention again by the New York Times mm -hmm. because uh, the Herald, I guess, they're too far from the uh, seaport or too far from the um, from the uncles to um, to make it a story. They got their head too far up Mickey's ass to make it a story. That's the problem. Got to be. Oh well, I'm out of material. Okay, have a great day, man. Later. Bye bye. Five, six, seven. See, and I don't understand why this. Nobody seems to care except me. I'm the only one that's pissed off over the fact that. And and then D, Defoe on her yesterday, not only sucking up to John Henry. Oh well, you know Wayne and Mickey, and everybody likes Mickey. Who the hell likes Mickey? What does Mickey Arison do for this community? You know, his father ran off. Rest in pieces. My father ran off with a nine billion dollars to Israel, so it could all be tax free. And then he croaked just uh, ahead of time. He didn't wait long enough so that they couldn't avoid the estate taxes. Anything that they can do to avoid paying taxes to this town and to this country, that's what they've uh, notoriously been famous for. And being in the cruise ship business, like I've told you, where every goddamn ship that they've got is uh, uh, ship's registry, some other goddamn foreign country, so they pay no U.S. taxes. And they stick those people on the buses and they schlep them from the airport over there to the port of Miami and they stick them on their boats and we don't get one single solitary dime from any of those people. How does that benefit this community? A siphon, and the Herald, they love him. They're in bed with him. They're fondling him. They're obsessed with him. And why? Because they're in bed together. Here's a mobile in Miami Beach. Hello. Yes, Neil, I was wondering if perhaps uh, you can answer a question for me. How come everybody shouldn't be in bed together? And why can't we be in bed with Alien? I Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hello, Neil? Yes. Uh, hi. First time call, a long time listener. Yes, sir. Uh, a transplanted Mets fan from Long Island. Uh huh. I, I have the, the cover of Sports Illustrated when Dow was rookie season. Yeah. The straw that stirs the Mets. <laughs> and I'm going to fax that to you. Right. The cover. The straw that's up his nose, yeah. And I don't think this is going to be the last draw either, by the way. You, you well, watch. I know. Will give him another chance and another chance and another chance, and nobody cares. Isn't that ironic? 
but he has a cover of Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated, yeah. Yeah. The straw that stirs the mess. Great. I'm back with you right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm holding my breath too. Send me the straw. Yeah, let's get Georgie W in here and uh and the straw man. And have a rip snorting good time. What do you say? <laughs> Twenty one before eleven at five sixty WQM. <laughs> What's this obsession with hokey? Tonight on VH1 Storytellers, it's a very special evening with Christina Aguilera. Like, I got the idea, you know, for, for this song. One day when my manager told me, I had to sing it. Get the story behind the music from the woman, the lady, the adolescent, who conquered the pop music world with her own unique style. I got, like, the idea for this song from um, Britney Spears, you know. Then I, like, told my record company, and uh, they had a guy write it for me and stuff. Christina Aguilera on VH1 Storytellers. I think, like, a big turning point for me musically, you know, was, was like when I finally realized, well, I needed breast implants. When they write the pop music history books, they'll file Christina Aguilera under A. They will? Oh, cool. Christina Aguilera, tonight on VH1 Storytellers, the show where people who have nothing to say say the stuff. That fucking bitch. Yeah. It's uh, 1044. You got your Grammys, by the way. And I said to George this morning, it looks like uh, Carlos Santana is going to walk away with a whole bunch of them. And he said, what? He said, Oi! Ye como va, is what he said. Yeah. Oi! Ye. I just don't understand that. Can anybody understand that? Can anybody explain that to me? No. Carlos Santana with his big comeback and this crap music that he's uh, pumping out? I don't know. They must be paying somebody off. 560560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a call from New York. Hello. Yes, uh, Neil, I'm Brian from New York, and I uh, catch your show um, over the Internet, actually. Yes, sir. And um, I just want to say uh, I love your show and great job. And I think your uh, comments about Daryl Strawberry are right on. Um, you know, they're going to keep on giving him a chance just as long as he can come out and he hits the ball and he gets people in the seats. And, you know, it's 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 a sad it's a, it's a sad time. But um, I really called to, to get your comments about um, the Dolphins in the, in the free agency. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line, the out of town line, eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. Here's a mobile in Jupiter. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. Listen. Um, first of all, I, I just want to tell you, you know, I, I I've been listening to you for many years. Uh-huh. You you always have a really, you know, astute view on politics. You're you're, you know, I don't always agree with you. But you always got a good opinion. You usually call a spade a spade. Yeah. Well, I got one question for but, you. Yes. When you got two candidates in the Democratic Party, you got Bill Bradley, who's a pretty honorable guy. Yeah. Who's a guy that has a message that's out there. Well, what, what's the message? Well, I mean, you know, number one, health care. I mean, the things that Bill Bradley's, you know, talking about. Yeah. And then you got this vicious, hypocritical liar, Al Gore. He's vicious and, and hypocritical, huh? Absolutely. So, so in other words, basically, the, the essence of this conversation is you want me to agree with what you're saying. Is that what you're, no, uh, the purpose of it no, is? Because I, I don't understand. think he's vicious, and I don't think he's any more of a liar than any other politician. Well, you don't think Shane, you invented the Internet? What do you think that's what? What do you think that's about? Oh, that, I mean, that's just, a, that's just being stupid. That's just a, uh, you know, a, a, a stupid comment is all it was. Yeah. He was he was he was a proponent of the internet and the uh, all of that stuff. I remember the speeches he made about. It was just a stupid comment. But that, does that make him a liar? And is that relevant Absolutely. to what we're talking about? What about the tobacco company? What about it? What about when he was uh, before no, the sir, tobacco company? No, sir, sir. What you want to do is repeat him? all the things that Bradley said, and like every other commentator said, this election isn't about what happened in '88 or '68 or '78. It's about what's happened in the last eight years and what these candidates stand for now. That, well, that's what it's about. I think what I, you know, the the thing I'm wondering is what what do you have against Bill Bradley? Well, I, I don't like Bill Bradley. He offers me nothing. He's lackluster. He says nothing. And now he's just la- and like I just got through saying, he's launching into a whole series of attacks based on what Gore did and voted ten years ago and twenty years ago. It isn't relevant. It doesn't mean anything. Okay. Well, I, I mean, if, just, if, if, I was just you know, on the one side, on the Republican side, basically, you've got a religious pissing contest, okay? The anti-Catholics against the anti-born-again Christians, and that's what they're talking about, and who's being the most mean-spirited, and who's doing the most dirty campaigning, and, and there's very little discussion of any issues. 
And, well, and, on, I, and on I, this I, side, you've got Bradley now in an act of desperation who's becoming really mean. You talk about mean-spirited, who's doing a lot of personal attacks. He's not doing any good for the party. He's got, he's got no chance. He's not going to win. Yeah, but, but don't you think uh, on the Republican side, don't you think McCain has a lot to say, too? Uh, no, I absolutely do not. I, I absolutely do not. Campaign finance reform is, is all hypocrisy on his part. He's been taking as much money from special interests as anybody else has been. He's a hypocrite. And a phony. He's 100% phony. And let me say it again. Because of the fact that he's different and he's a war hero and he's an enigma because nobody knows very much about him because most of the American people are bozos and they don't, are not involved in politics, all of a sudden, oh, hey, he's the great white hope. In the meantime, his voting record is as conservative or more conservative than Strom Thurmond, okay? Well, well, 17 you know, years of a record to stand on. And we're not they, talking about 10 and 20 years ago. We're talking about this past year. We're talking about right up to this moment. Well, you know, today there's Al Gore. He's going to be there at Century Village in Deerfield. Yeah. Well, uh, so you don't like Al Gore, but I mean, you're entitled not to like Al Gore. If you want to vote for Bill Bradley in a Florida primary, be my guest. I'll well, vote. I will be voting for Al Gore. I just, I just have a problem with his integrity. I don't. All. I don't. Okay. Okay. Cheers. See you. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. If I'm looking for integrity in a politician, I'm going to be looking a long long time okay they're all a bunch of grave robbers it's a matter of survival that's the way the game is played unfortunately you're looking for some honest schlump to come along without to taking millions and millions of dollars from these chinese and, and everybody else and their brother not going to happen it's not going to happen and it's interesting by the way and now all of a sudden george bush george w is for campaign finance reform yeah after new hampshire all of a sudden he discovered it Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, even though the Republicans, of course, bury it, and even though Pat Robertson's on there talking about how it's an invasion of their freedom of speech because he wants all the goyim to be able to pump as much money in there as they possibly can. Oh, yeah, we got to have the born-again Christians running America, right? No. No. They they just refuse to get the message. They don't get it. The overwhelming majority of the public doesn't uh, it hates them like poison, hates them, despises them like poison. And if I have to choose between the Catholic Church with all their crap and all their scandals with it, you know, they just got a, a little bit of a fag problem there. But if I have to choose between them and the born-again Christians, I'll take the Catholics any day of the week, thank you. Any day. Here's a mobile in West Miami. Hello. Good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. When I saw little Georgie squirming and trying to put a positive spin on his loss yesterday, I absolutely got my rocks off. Yeah. I mean, he, I loved it. I, I loved I'm it. I'm enjoying it tremendously, the... watching him squirm. I love it. Uh, with all the millions that he's poured into that to have him come up loser like that yeah. and then blame it all on the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And the well, latest you know they thing... they up the rules in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And the latest thing on the on the uh, Ilion saga is now he's a, he's a saint rise, rising from the ocean. Yeah. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's it. I just okay. wanted to get it in. Thanks for the good news. Bye. 567, maybe what's your name will come back too, the mermaid. 567 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. No more Tom Hanks movies, please. Can we have a year without Tom Hanks, uh -huh. please? Wouldn't that be great to see him go in limbo? Just think of all the people in Hollywood you'd like to see go away. Just for a year, give us a rest. He's definitely one of them. Just stay home eating his box of chocolates, leaving all the rest of us alone. Here's Hialeah. Hello. Hialeah. Hey, Neil. How are you this morning? Okay, sir. Uh, you know, I was actually looking forward to watching the Grammys tonight until I saw that Rosie O'Donnell's going to be hosting the damn thing. Yeah. I know that's how I felt. Who she got naked pictures of? <laughs> that bitch. That disgusting cow. No, I know. Anyway, this morning they had on that Conger uh, lady, the the one that married the millionaire on uh, yeah. Good Morning America. I'm sure that it was on once that you'll never see again, right? Diane Sawyer, and you know it's been a, her worst nightmare, according to her, and she never slept with the guy. And oh, of course not. They were they were staying in separate rooms. Yeah. The whole thing was a sham. This guy is a uh, you know former uh, two bit movie star and uh, stand up comedian who's a publicity seeking phony baloney yeah. who doesn't have two nickels to rub together, much less millions of dollars. Yeah, she's supposed to be on 2020, and she supposedly hasn't taken any money. Money, although she's had huge but, offers. But isn't it interesting she's going to be on 2020? Yeah. Well, what is this all about? Why can't they just say it was a fraud, it, yeah. it was a bad idea, it was a disgusting, revolting idea, they're not going to do it anymore, and now we go on with something that makes any sense? Who cares about that bitch? Well, ABC wants to make CBS look pretty bad, I guess. No, Fox. It was Fox. Oh, okay, whatever. Fox. Yeah. And another thing, on the back of the living arts section today, it lists all the symptoms of computer addiction, yeah. psychological, physical... 
uh, we need to start a class action suit against Bill Gates like they did against the tobacco industry. Yeah, right. You know, make some money. A lot of people are addicted, right. You think about it. Okay, have a great day, Okay, Pat. bye. A lot of computer nerds out there. Morning, noon, and night. Ba, 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 ba. But uh, great seeing all the response we're getting on our website, though. That's good. And if anybody would say, if Beefo or anybody else would say, well, they're just voting against that tax money for the stadium because you're against it, then how come our presidential poll came out to totally different and McCain did so well and Bush got a bunch of votes and even that sparks through Alan Keyes got 4.4%. How is, how is that possible if everybody's just uh, going along with me? Like the guy before, he doesn't like Gore. He's, he's entitled. But I mean to call it, if you want to discuss it, fine. But if you want to have an argument with me, I'll be glad to argue with you, sir. But there's no point to it. You're not going to convince me. I have absolutely no problem with Al Gore based on the uh, present field of who we have to choose from. Is he? Would he be my number one choice to be the president? Of course not. No. No. And let me say it again, and I say it with no problem at all. I like Bubba a lot. I love Bubba. For me, the last eight years have been fine. I'm not just talking about personally, but as far as the country is concerned. We're making a lot of progress slowly. I mean, very slowly, but then again, look at the obstacles he's been up against. They've been too busy. They wasted a year and a half worrying about the blowjobs and all of this other stuff, as opposed to really getting down to things that they could have been taking care of, like campaign finance reform that supposedly they're so concerned about, and education, and other important things. And gun control. Oh, my God, you can't say that. Yeah, and I love McCain's answer, by the way. When they talked about, you know, if you have to register your car, how come you, what's the big deal with having to register your gun? Well, the Constitution doesn't give us any rights to own a car. Of course, they didn't have any cars when they wrote the Constitution. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have automobiles when they wrote the Constitution, Senator McCain. Maybe that's why it doesn't say anything about your right to own a car or drive a car or have a driver's license, et cetera, and so on. And it also, by the way, doesn't say a goddamn word about having a right to own a gun. That's not what it says. But that was his response. Every single issue from abortion, you name it, gun control, fags, every one of them, the right-wing agenda, which is why Gary Bauer endorses him very enthusiastically, that's John McCain. But if you see, look at him and say, hey, he's a great war hero, he never stole a freight train, he's a reformer, be my guest. It's a free country. Vote for whoever you like. Just not Bush. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here is a man who thought that all he, all he had to do was just show up, just show up, just be as dumb, just like uh, that Luther Campbell song, as stupid as he wanted to be, and America would just laugh it up. And all of a sudden, eh, maybe not such a good idea. And you mark my word, that moved to the far right in South Carolina, and this hopping into bed with Pat Robertson and Bob Jones University and all these other Farbison and Goyim. That's going to cost him big time. Because if he does win the nomination, which is still very much in doubt at this point, although I think he will because of the rules of the primaries, but if he does win it, I don't think he's got a Chinaman's chance against Gore or Bradley in the fall. George E. W. Fort Lauderdale, hello. You're absolutely correct, sir. Yes, I am. Nigger Neil God. Yes. Yeah, um, it was funny. Last night I was watching George W. working the crowd, as they call it. Uh -huh. He looks like he's just going through the motions, like he really can't stand doing what he's doing. And then this morning in the Slum Sentinel, there's an article about how good he is at working the crowds, as compared to Bubba, yeah. who it seems like every every place um, Clinton goes, people just really like him. I mean, he's a nice guy, and he just has that charisma about him. Yeah. But George W., he's like a slime ball or something. It's disgusting. I mean, who'd you rather go to a party with, Bubba or uh, George W.? You know, because exactly. George W. would probably go off in the corner, you know, and snort some, and uh, meanwhile, exactly. probably be uh, doing something exciting. Yeah, but you're right on the money about McCain and all that. It's scary. A lot of people don't realize what he's what he's thinking and all that because he doesn't really give his full thoughts all the time. No, but I, but I will say this. At least, if nothing else, I'll say this for McCain. At least he's he's for the moment he's working against that right-wing faction of the Republican Party. They hit him like poison, right. although the fact that Gary Bauer endorses him still uh, terrifies me and makes me realize what we're really dealing with. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. It's a scary thing. But um, also, um, I wanted to put in my vote for Santana. I know you don't like him. No. Oh. But you can play the pukes on it. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Thank you. There's have pukes a, on. Have and uh, one more puke for uh, Rosie O'Donnell, please. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, it's uh, 1056, 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. That's one thing most of us can agree upon, can't we? Uh -huh. Rosie O'Donnell, she's a pig and disgusting and not funny and just nauseating, just to puke from. The women of America, I rest my case, like I said yesterday, their taste is in their rectum tush. Between her and uh, all this other crap, don't blame the men of America with Jerry Springer. They're not the ones who are home during the day watching that crap. It's the women of America. You're not going to be watching Oprah's new channel? 
There's another one for you. That bitch. She's got them all mesmerized, eating out of the palm of her gland. Can anybody explain to me what that's all about, that Oprah thing? No. No. You go, girl. Yeah, you go, girl. Far away, soon. 10.57 at 5.60 QM. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, Regis. So you want to be a millionaire? Sure, Reed. Let's go. I am the next one sitting across from Regis Philbin. Hope that I win. Got my first question. Oh, God, I feel so dumb. Running out of time. Still got all three lifelines. Come on, Regis, come and quiz. My us. answer is a C. I'll try 50 50. That leaves just two. Now, what do I do? If I am a chore, to show me the door. If they get harder, I won't go no farther. I am stuck on this one. Should I call up someone? Get my mom on the phone in a hurry. Come on, Sam. Just ask her. Need your final answer. I'm Regis, getting pissed. What did she say? She don't know. Here I go. What does the audience think? The show's almost done. Still on question one. I'm not answering, but he keeps asking. The answer I need should have went on greed. Eeny, meeny, me. Guess I'll go with B. Final answer. I will ask him. Oh, 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 oh. Look at me. No Kathy Lee. Oh, oh, oh. this game show. The others blow. Oh, 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 oh. Greed is fading. We got ratings. It's 11.03 at 560 WQAM. Here's a call in Perrine. Hello. Hey, O'Neal. Yes, sir. What's up? Not much. All right. Good morning. Last night, doing some channel surfing. I was there with my wife watching TV, and we were watching uh, Fox News Channel, uh-huh. which was probably the first mistake. There was a female on there uh, supporting the Republican Party. Of course. And my wife looked at me, and she goes, you know how any woman in their right mind can even be associated with the Republican Party is beyond me. How can how can they look at themselves in the mirror and uh, be part of that party? Is... Well, look at that Mary Magdalene bitch they got on uh, Crossfire every night. The one that's married to James Carville with the bald head. Oh, jeez. Talk about a fascist pig, a piece of crap. Can't believe oh, it. Well, I'm not sure she's a woman, to be honest with you. That's true. That's she looks true. real butch to me. Very. Very. And another thing, my vote for the Grammys tonight? Yes, sir. Bitch, he queers. Okay. At least she's got some meat or fish on her body. Okay. Bye, Neil. See ya. Yeah, but isn't she underage? No. No, not anymore. She's old enough. Speaking of uh, Kathy Lee, this is very distressing. In Josie Lambie's column, right next to all this crap about Joe Rose and Cecil Collins and the same stuff that he's written. He's written the same thing about 20 times now, Josie. Maybe his Alzheimer's is kicking in. Toothy TV talker Kathy Lee and hubby Frank Gifford at the water for, uh, waterfront seafood joint Snapper's Restaurant, mile marker 94.5 in Key Largo, after joining a large group of friends gathered at an outdoor table under a chic uh, thatch, chicky thatch, Kathy Lee was mobbed by fans. Is, is that nauseating or what? Kathy Lee was mobbed by fans. She kissed babies, signed dozens of autographs, and posed for as many pictures. Frank, it's like he wasn't even there. Well, I can understand that. But Kathy Lee, mobbed by dozens of fans? Was it for her singing? No. For her acting? No. For her great sense of humor? No. For that great uh, slave labor she's doing out in her Latin America? No. That she keeps lying about? No. I don't get it. I just don't. I just don't understand what America is thinking about. Like this bitch, this is the guy I mentioned before, Darva Conger. She's going to be on 2020 now because she got was on that stupid Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire show, and the guy turned out to be a pizza delivery guy, I guess. Look at this phone today, man. I'm going to tell you, I think we're out of business. I think I think it's all over. It's history. Yesterday, we had a record-breaking day on our website. We had, what, 72 trillion hits on the website? But on the phone, forget it. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's our only call, Papano Beach. Hello. Hey, asshole. Have you heard the best? Okay, that's it. That's our medley of our call. Hey, asshole. Okay.
And people say to me, oh, gee, I sure hope you're not going to retire too soon. I sure hope you're not going to go away because what are we going to do? I don't know. What am I going to do? What am I going to do for for a, uh, a response on this show? I guarantee you, I'm not going back. I, you know, maybe it was very entertaining. You know, I talked about doing it for a long time, talking for four hours every day. It, it just, it just take, tears your kishkis out. Nobody can do that. Who ever heard of somebody having to do a talk show, talking to himself for four hours every day? Well, we got 50 billion people allegedly listening on there, and none of them ever have anything to say except, hey, asshole, up your ass, or whatever this guy said. Everywhere you go in this town, it's like, you know, it's like the same, uh, like at the hockey games. Hey, uh, hey, come on, have a little excitement. Here's something free. All right, like that bitch the other day. Oh, uh, you know, she's chewing the guy out, and then she says, uh, how about some tickets? I'll take some tickets. I got a ticket for you, honey. Rectum. That's where you can stick it, the ticket, bitch. Here's Miami Beach. Hello. Morning. Yes, sir. All right. Who, in your opinion, is the premier presidential candidate? I just got through telling you. The one I like of the bunch is Al Gore. Oh. Okay. Well, why do you sound so bummed out about it? What do you, why do you say premier? Why, I don't think any of them are worth a crap, but that, there's oh, only, right. there are only four of them that are worth talking about right now, and he's the one that I prefer. Okay. Well, why do you sound so bummed out about well, it? Just, Would uh, it make you happier if I said some other name? No, I just want to get your opinion. Yeah. Well, how, what's your opinion? Well, Keyes seems like to be the most intelligent out of them all. Keyes. Although Keyes. Never... Are, are you a religious nut? No, 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 no. Then, why, just... then why would you mention his name? Well, because he seems to be the most are, intelligent. Are you, are you black? Them, but no. Are you black? No. No. Just, he seems to be the most intelligent out of all of them. But he's a religious nut. Well, then uh, that's a shame for that. Well, well, you say it's a shame for that. That's what his whole thing is about, his morality and being a uh, born-again fanatic. That's his whole campaign is based on. He doesn't uh, stand for anything else. Well, I haven't followed him closely enough, obviously. Then, then why would you give me that name, sir? Please do me a favor in November. Stay home. Do not vote. Please. I beg you. I beg you. What are they seriously? What are they concerned about? The broad that was stiffed by the guy and who wants to marry a millionaire? And Kathy Lee is having dinner at some uh, chop house down there in Key Largo with Frank, and let's go get her autograph. And then after that, we'll run up and see if OJ's in town for another golf tournament. I'm sorry, folks. I know I can't change the human race, but it's getting so much worse by the minute. I can't. I can't wait. I can't wait to say bye bye. Oh, yeah, why don't you leave now? Screw you, Neil. Screw you. Yeah, but then what are you going to do with your life four hours every day, huh? I mean, you can only rub it so long before it gets raw. And then after the first hour, what do you do then the rest of your life? I mean, Jesus, you can't complain about the political knowledge of the uh, South Florida population here because, generally speaking, there's almost none. It don't exist. Yeah, he's really intelligent, that Alan Keith. Well, he's the, first of all, he's a radio talk show guy. So he's glib. He can speak, okay? He's got a radio talk show, Alan Keyes. That's what he does for a living. So the fact that he's articulate and can speak, he'd be speaking pretty good. Hitler was a pretty dynamic speaker, too, last time I remember. Uh-huh. Yeah. Only had a better mustache than Alan Keyes. Nine minutes after 11 at 5, I had a better hairdo. Nine minutes after 11 at 560 WQAM. Here's the guy he sucks, okay? Ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This is Mumbles number five. Fifteen at five sixty WQM. I'm going to tell you something. Seriously, if you have any stock, if you have all your money tied up in stocks, like ninety five percent of America does now, whether they have five bucks or five million, 
And here he goes again. Teaching and getting jobs. Here he goes again. We have part two now of Humphrey Hawkins with Alan Greenspan. I thought it was all over with. I thought we survived it. We made a little bit of a comeback. And guess what? Here he is back again today. Ba 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 ba. Mumbling just like that thing we just heard there. Mumbling four and five. And the Dow is down 139 and dropping like a rock. As he speaks, as every word comes out of his fat, disgusting mouth, that you can watch your money just piss away right in front of your face. Just vanish. Excepting uh, for the sake of argument. Oh, God. Just drag his ass out of there, okay? Get him out of our lives. I, I think the way to do it is just have him come and testify every day. And then in about two weeks, or, you know, we'll all be broke. We'll all, we'll all be on an even playing field. We'll all be totally broke. The Breaking of America by Alan Greenspan. Down 136 and dropping like a goddamn <laughs> bomb. La Bamba. Don't get excited about it. Just relax. This too shall pass, okay? Okay. Five, six, seven. Didn't Alan Keyes invent the Internet? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I heard. He invented the Internet for dark folks. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Neil, how you doing? Okay. Hey, this is a uh, Cubanito from Miami. Let you know that I've uh, got to wish you a thank you and uh, do everything for you. I've lost 30 pounds in the Atkins, man. All right. I All right. Great. Um... Yeah. And what just happened to him? Hello? 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 Oh, now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Did you see what just happened? Line 8 came on. Happened line to me all that guy on. disappeared and Line 8 came back on. So if there's anybody in this building, including our esteemed program director, general manager, engineer, anybody else who thinks that our phone problem has been solved, I mean, it has been a lot better. But here this guy vanishes and Line 8 pops on by itself again, which happened once yesterday. And you didn't believe me. You thought I my hand bumped it over here. I was nowhere near that damn thing and the phone either. The agony continues. When you finally get some people on the phone here, you can't have a conversation because this thing's got a mind of its own. And let me tell you again that that computer in there is screwed up. It's a piece of crap, the one that they absolutely refuse to replace and give us one that works because they're a bunch of cheap pricks. I warned you people in this building. I said, don't do it. Don't buy that uh, that we can't talk about, okay? I warned you that. Did George buy any? Did he get it? No. Did I? No. Did Robert Grieper? No. No. We're the only ones. Because I know these people like a book. Everything they touch turns to instant process. <laughs> Schmidt. Just give us a phone that works. That's all. Give us a phone that works. Wind it up. Walk away. Leave us alone. That's all we ask. Pay people on payday when they're supposed to. That's all. And that's it. Very difficult, right? No. No. And they still can't do that. Here it is, February 23rd, 2000. And they still can't get it right. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello? Yes, Neil? Yes, sir. Yes, I was calling just to tell you why I was voting for Bradley. It's not that I'm obsessed with him or anything. I just think he'd make a, a high-quality president. And I, I, mean, think I, I don't dislike Bill Bradley. I mean, he's okay. I would have no problem with him. But I like Al Gore better. No, no, I see that, too, and I just thought he might work on some real issues and not get sidetracked with all this minor stuff and, you know, all the crap that goes on and you read about and hear about. Yeah. That's all. So well, I, but, I, they, well, but you got to remember, don't get too carried away because they all talk great during the election campaign. They've all got the best of intentions. they got, you know, a lot of great ideas, really some of them do. And then once they get in there, they got to understand nothing gets done without Congress. They, can, they can't act unilaterally and do whatever the hell they want. True. Well, I appreciate you listening to the input, and uh, have a good day, too. Okay, back to you. Yeah, I have no I don't dislike Bill Bradley. I, and, you know, in fact, I'm, I think it was good that he got in there. He, uh, he gave uh, Gore a shot in the uh, ass. Got him off his dead ass. Woke him up a little bit. And it's still not a done deal. I mean, Gore doesn't completely have it wrapped up, although it would take some, barring some uh, bizarre event, it looks pretty uh, likely that he'll be the Democratic candidate. You like Bill Bradley? I'm not going to have a snit about that. If you like John McCain, you're entitled to do that. I just uh, would urge you to take a look at what his voting record is and what he, his positions have been the last 17 years. He didn't all of a sudden wake up one day and become the great reformer and all of a sudden change his colors. I mean, it sounds great in a campaign, but let's see what he's really all about. Oh, my God. Look at this. Oi. Troy. How are you, Neil? Roy. It's Mitch Lewis. And, you know, you're the best. Rhymes with Jewish. 
Yes, I am the best, and I'm sitting here working for the worst bunch of Bush League broadcasters in the history of the human race. Where are you? And you know that's the problem with it is that is that it's the business that you're in, and the the worst thing about it is it's the city of the business that you're in. Right. Did you call to get me depressed? No, but I called to you know I know South Florida is not going to like what I have to say. Where are you? you, Where are you? I'm in Burbank. I've been out here for about uh, eleven months. Uh huh. Let me tell you a story about my agent, one of the biggest voiceover agents in Los Angeles. Yes. Sitting at dinner with him, and he says, oh, South Florida, you ever hear of a guy named Neil Rogers? Yeah. And I went, oh. Oh. And he uh, he said, man, you sound just like the guy. (laughs) I said, what are you, nuts? I am the guy. He got up out of his chair. He went over. He kissed me on the top of my bald head. Yeah. He went to college down there. He's got a whole group of friends out here that love you. Really? If you went to a different city, like you say, a real living, breathing town, yeah, you would see how happy you got, even in that crap hole business you call radio. That's right, because I wouldn't have to sit and beg for calls every day. Do you have any idea that I'm doing the same thing now I was doing 20 years ago, begging for phone calls every day for four hours, talking to assholes, and begging for phone calls every day of my life? You know, people don't appreciate you. You're too brilliant. You've got too much to say. You're too on the ball. I've known, I've been listening to you for many years yeah. now. Yeah. And uh, and and what happens is is they get they get they get uh, spoiled down there, and then you go to any other city and you, you try to listen to real controversy. Fortunately, we've got Phil out here. Yeah. But you try to listen to something. Somebody's got an opinion. Are you sure? I'm absolutely positive. Yeah. And the bottom line is is that is that people could be consuming you in this country. Yeah. That, that I, love should be, you, I should that be on nationwide. If I was be, on nationwide, I'd be fifty times bigger than that fat ass Nazi Rush Limbaugh. I'll tell you that right now. But I don't know. I don't know. You know how how you would feel about you know doing a show where you're happy to come in every day. <laughs> it would be a culture shock. I'll tell you. No, actually, when I come in, you can ask George. I'm pretty happy most days until the show starts, and then I go through my uh, monologue and I talk, and then uh, I can't get a response, and then I start getting pissed off, and I go home leaving here like shaking my head, like what am I doing here? Every the audience day. proves to you every single day why you hate that job. I don't. I hate this town. I'll tell you that. Oh, I've yeah. said that many times. I just despise it here. This is the end of the world. You saw it. It's like a place for dead people. There's no living and breathing people here. It's ninety percent dead people. You know, I'm sorry. I, I've got family and friends that live in South Florida, and that's by you know that's not my problem. I I feel like if I never <laughs> go back to Florida, it's yeah. too soon. Right. Just That's how I feel. I just came back from Amsterdam. I go five times a year to Europe, and every time the plane comes back and lands here, I want to blow my brains it's out. It's depressing. You fly yeah. in. It's like a concrete parking lot. Right. There's no personality geographically to start with. Right. And if you don't consume the ocean, if you're not out in a boat, if you're not fishing, yeah. if you're not doing something that involves the ocean, let me tell you, there's a lot of ocean in this world yeah. with a lot better places attached to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I fly across it five times a year. You land in some cities, and, and there's back. mountains, and there's things, and there's and it's like, oh, my God, it's like yeah. a postcard. You come into Florida, and it's it's planned uh, real estate. It's like Reckon. trees here. Hell, it damn near killed them. Yeah. I feel, actually, I've got, you know, like I said, I've got family down there. I feel like if I go there, it's a nightmare that all of a sudden they're going to close the doors and say, okay, now we're not letting anyone else out. So, in other words, it's not just me. It's not because I'm a sour puss and a badass and a hard ass. It's not that I want to whine and complain. It's just uh, it's just what it is. You, you know, are I've a barometer of the years. city. It's yeah. a sick, no-town, dead place to live yeah. i'm telling you you get into a coma in south florida that's right and you get involved in the humidity and the heat yeah. and you get involved in the in the angst that is the energy of the city yeah and unfortunately the complexion of the city is crap yeah it's a nasty hole it now is. la isn't the best city in the world but you've got mountains and ocean and people that are happy here oh, i hate it i don't like LA and they, and LA, they la used to be great la used to be sensational well i'm here because of, of the business i'm in yeah you know, and it's the best move I've ever made in my life. You know what happened to the man who got everything he ever wanted? I mean, I don't, I don't speak Korean, so I don't know anything about L.A. anymore. <laughs> well, you know what it was? The, the 818 area code was very uh, preferable because it it's, uh, means money or luck in, in, in the Asian cultures. Yeah. And they were very upset when they switched it and had to split area codes. So, in other words, I assume that you're doing pretty good. Neil, I'm doing better than I've ever done in my whole life. Right. I've always been happy personally. I have family and kids and friends, and but professionally, radio kicked the crap out of me. I never had a great year in my life in that business. Mm-hmm. I had fun. Mm-hmm. It was a great job for a kid Yeah. coming out of college or whatever you're doing. But as a man gets older in that business, it's like on the Howard Stern crap where, you know, uh, WNBC, having a guy who's half my age, telling me how to do what I've been doing for twice as long as he's been in the business, I was ready to throw up. I saw no future in it. 
and it was fun, and there was a lot of things that happened that were great, but there was a lot of crap. Too. Yeah, but you got to you got to meet Mike Ranieri <laughs> every morning. Yeah, and Henry Barrow. Oh, you know, if you were to go to a town, well, where where am I going to go? What were you matter. Go, where, where am I going to go? Do it from Italy. Do it from your house in Italy. Oh, so in other words, you're saying I should do the house the show from someplace else? Well, coincidentally, we're working on that because I can't live here forever. I mean, Thank this you. place is the end of the world. You're right. It drags you down to their level. There's happy people all over the place, and I don't find That's that. right, and most of them aren't here. You know what it is? There's, what, three million people in South Florida? Four. Four million. Okay, and I would say fairly enough that there's about two and a half to three million assholes. Right. That's right. Give here, me a great there's, time. what, about eight million people here in L.A., six to eight million? And there's about the same amount of assholes, so the density is a lot lower. Right. The, the asshole per uh, square inch uh, is a lot lower out there. So you run into fewer. On the road in, in South Florida... They'll cut you off and then shoot you the bird about it. Are you Here, sure? They'll cut you off and they don't even know you exist. Yeah. Which is so much preferable. Much right. more. I'd rather. I'd rather well, everybody. I'm glad leave you're happy. Alone. You sound real happy, and I'm, I feel a lot better now after talking to you for five minutes. I feel like uh, going out to a gun shop on 441. I'm blowing my brains out, but I'll survive. Troy. Take care of yourself, Mitch. Love you, Neil. See ya. Bye. The great Mitch Lewis, who said, "Boy," and then he said, "Rectum," and then "Roy," and a few of the others. Good guy. Bald, but a good guy. And he got the hell out of here. You see, people that get out of here, they're like, oh! happy. And here I am every day trying desperately not to, like, browbeat the public. Just get a little bit of response here. Just pick up the phone, give me a call. Just something, that's all. Agree, argue, disagree, puke, whatever you want. I don't care. Just something. Just some sign that there's somebody alive out there. That's why it's so exciting. We're doing these polls on our website now. Gee, 100, 200, all of a sudden there's 300 votes. We had almost 600 votes on the presidential poll. For this crowd, boy, that's pretty exciting. That's all you want, just a little response like you go to the game. Some reaction, okay, besides just waiting for the goddamn crack to get slung up in the stands. Is it going to happen? No. No, but it sounds good. Thanks for getting me depressed, Mitch. No cafe grande, latte, mocha, frappuccino necessary. Wake up with the Sunday morning sports page. Sunday morning, 7 to 9, with Jim Mandich and Josh Darrow. On Sports Radio 560 QAM. Wrecked him. Hell, it damn near killed him. Eleven thirty-two, a little Mitch Lewis tribute there. Let's hear it, oh. Mitch Lewis. Uh, what we need is a lot longer rejoins. I think then we can make the four-minute breaks into about five and a half or six minutes and make sure that we, nobody hangs on the phone. Nice going there, Duff, you jackass. I mean, well, what do we need the sound effects in there? I mean, is this like the Three Stooges? Is that what it is? Uh -huh. Come on, give me a break already. What the hell was that? And then those long, ponderous hurricane uh, rejoins with the little promos in it. See, this is what happens when you make all these promises. We're going to give you billboards. We're going to give you rejoins. We're going to all of these promos. And as a result, we wind up with like 90% of the programming on this radio station is commercial content. There is no goddamn programming. It's nothing but commercials. It's to see a promos and commercials and commercials and promos. When's that Marlin game coming, by the way? 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's a call in Tallahassee. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I agree with that last guy. You need to go somewhere where they have the mental capacity to uh, understand what you're saying to them. So, in other words, you're telling me I've wasted 24 years of my life? Yeah, probably. Oh. <laughs> How uplifting. Yeah. Uh, if I could switch gears for a second, I don't know if anyone brought it up. Did you hear about uh, Louis uh, Farrakhan Jr.? No. He uh, was arrested and charged with uh, whacking his eight-and-a-half-month pregnant wife over the head with a metal serving tray. All right. Wow. <laughs> she had to go for the NHL. Yeah, they had to stitch her up uh, so much, I guess, for the Million Man March and treating your women better and uh, uh -huh. all that good stuff. But... Uh, no, no, I think they misunderstood. I think he said beating your women better is what he said. <laughs> All right. I guess so. Mm -hmm. uh, 
this John McCain thing, I, I hear a lot of people talking about uh, he's a great guy, a stand-up guy. He's a reformer. Character. He's a reformer. Right. But uh -huh. I, I don't – wasn't there a thing on 60 Minutes about him uh, while he was in captivity, his wife? Uh, all those years he was in captivity, she stuck with him. She campaigned to get him out of captivity. Mm -hmm. Out of stuck by him. him. Yeah, all those years that, that he was there. And when he got out and came back, what did he do? He divorced her and married the daughter of some rich oil tycoon. Nice move. Yeah. That sounds like a sounds pretty... Sounds like Newt Gingrich to me. Yeah, moral, yeah, moral stand-up guy. There's your moral stand-up guy for you. But, uh, well, see, the public is frustrated because they think that Gore is strictly establishment. And they figure Bradley's even more boring than Gore is. And... Uh, and they hate George W. like poison. They pretty much all agree on that. So they look at him as the alternative because they don't know much about him. So he's like uh, the new face in the crowd. And, oh, yeah, here's somebody else. And he was a war hero, so he can't be all bad. And, therefore, let's jump on his bandwagon, even though they don't know what he's all about. Yeah, well, he was that's, a that's war hero. That's the American hero. way, you know. Well, uh, his wife doesn't feel like that, I guess. Stand by him all that time and yeah. uh, jump ship to some ritual of tycoon's daughter. But uh, that's that's the guy for you. Not Let's, for me. I'll pass. All right, Neil. Have a great day, sir. You God bless you and all the people in Tallahassee. Let's hear it for FSU oh, and the game. Oh, oh. And are the Hurricanes? What about the Hurricanes? No. no. Don't take it personally, but we don't want to hear it for them. We're nauseated by them. Out of town line, 877-785-6345. That Mitch Lewis call, boy, that was, I don't know what to do after that. I want to crawl under the table and kind of play my navel. I mean, I understand everything he's saying. I mean, there's nothing new and revolutionary about that, and he sounds great, and he's having a good time, and his life has improved dramatically, which I'm sure mine would be, too, if I ever get the hell out of here. But I'm stuck now. I'm stuck. I backed myself into this horse and buggy town, and uh, I'm just stuck. And, and you know, and, and it would take so very little, just a little bit of effort on their part, just a phone system that worked, just the want to be being a little bit more professional and being a little bit more aggressive. What about this TV campaign that we slapped all that makeup on? Remember how many weeks ago that was? When is that going to start? That John Juris was running around here like a big shot. Oh, we're going to do this, and Greg Reed was running around like they're actually going to do something. Is there anything going on? No. No, I haven't seen anything about that. And probably because they don't have the money because that thing that we can't talk about because we're still in the quiet period, we still can't talk about that, is turning out to be a big, gigantic <laughs> flop. A big, smelly, gigantic flop. I'm not turning on that uh, CNBC anymore. I, I, I mean, the Mitch Lewis call was depressing. I'm delighted to hear from him. He's a good guy. But uh, turning on CNBC and watching Alan Greenspan uh, fart away my money, I can't handle that. It's nauseating, disgusting. Every word that comes out of his mouth, and it's like you, know, you can feel you can feel your wallet moving around in your pocket and the money like and the wallet keeps getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Yeah, he's lightening that load. It's the Alan Greenspan diet. He'll make your wallet so light you'll feel like a feather. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Neil. Back back with you. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry uh, about that because yeah. our phone screwed up, yeah. Oh, system sucks. Line, line 8 just knocked you right off. Oh, God. Hey, I just wanted to let you know because I was, I was talking to you about the uh, Atkins. Right. And at the same time letting you know that I've uh, been successful at it. But one of the main concerns that I had is because it got me real pissed off was the other day at a home shopping network, one of those network uh, deals. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne Summers was selling uh, one of her uh, diet deals, and now she's come up with a Suzanne Summers size. And she says that uh, now low carbs is the best, and she's uh, come out with a book and with a training. Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody and their brother now is doing this the low carb thing. Right. It got me so pissed off looking at this, and I was like, this is, you know, the guy that really originated it was Atkins, you know, for a bunch of years. And now she's trying to sell herself with it. Well, but what about the Hellers? They're doing the same thing. Yes. And then the ones that have that infomercial on TV, those boring guys with the pastel background there, I can't think of what their name is, but the, oh, Protein Power, Eads. There you go. Dr. Eads, yeah, another one with their, uh, yeah, of course, if they discover that something works and becomes popular, they all want to jump on the bandwagon, just like all the quiz shows back on TV. Now, every network's got 85 quiz shows 20 times a week. That's what I wanted to let you know. It just pissed me off to hear that. But uh, just wanted to let you know that I'm a true believer of Atkins and true believer of you. Okay, well, you keep it up. You take care of yourself. Thanks. Bye -bye. Yeah, maybe I'll go back on Atkins today. What do you say? <laughs> well, you know something? Didn't I say a few days ago, and I really mean it, I'm losing weight now in 10-pound increments. I'm looking at dieting in a whole new way. Work on the 10 pounds, which I did lose, by the way. And now I'm just kind of, uh, I haven't been eating some crap, but amazingly really, uh, you know, gain a pound here. And the three pounds I gained in Amsterdam on my vacation, I lost them. So I'm pretty much back uh, maybe a couple of pounds beyond the lowest point I had in the last month. So now it's time to work on the next 10 pounds. And that the literature we got the other day about those two studies that in Atkins, finally all of a sudden, hey, here's some uh, proof right there in uh, these studies 
because you know the medical profession, unless they've got double and triple and quadruple blind studies, they don't believe in anything. And here are the studies, and the cholesterol levels came down, and the triglycerides came down, and the people lost weight, and they're healthy, and they're still alive. So what are we getting for lunch? Well, no, now we can get Natkin's lunch. We can get Tony's in here with some uh, stuff. But I, I do think I'm allergic to cheese, though. I think I have uh, lactose intolerance. I think milk makes me a little. I, I just do. Uh, too much cheese. Too much goddamn cheese. And I love cheese. Oh, man, do I love cheese. Wow. Do you know anybody who doesn't like cheese? No. No. Is there anybody in this audience who doesn't like No. No, everybody loves cheese. Don't forget the cheese. We're going to get Tony's? The usual stuff. Sure. Yeah, let's get Tony's. Brad uh, probably upset with me because I said something about the salads and they're putting the meat in there. We love you, Brad. You're okay. Just quit. Uh, well, now we want the meat back. Today I'm doing Atkins. Tomorrow I'll do uh, Suzanne Summers. The next day I'll do uh, Nick Lash- Lackey, whatever his name is. And then the day after that I'll do him again. Hey, listen, speaking of that, if you're getting a little bald spot on the top of your head or maybe a big, big fat one and a bald spot, too. The Sports Leader. Sports Radio 560. Q-A-M. Got to keep your Johnson straight here. Tonight on Masterpiece Theater, the Tourette Syndrome Player presents Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. What light through yon window break? It is the east. And Juliet is the slut you pay, you pay. The Tourette <laughs> player presentation of Romeo and Juliet on tonight. Okay, what city did Romeo and Juliet take place in, by the way? What city in Italy? Romeo and Juliet, where was the uh, setting for the story? Oh, fair Verona. Verona, very good. And you want to know the reason I know that? Because it was a question on uh, Squeal of Fortune last night. What's the out-of-town number? I'm glad you asked. 877-785-6345. So one of our faxers sends me the St. Joe Hospital Medical Center diet here, which uh, a lot of, oh, man. But it says it works on a chemical breakdown. It's proven you can lose 10 pounds in uh, three days. You'll, you will lose 10 pounds in three days. You go off and eat normal for four days. Go back on three. It says you, you can lose up to 40 pounds in a month if you stick to this diet. 40 pounds in a month. But there are a couple of things on here like beets and hard-boiled egg. Would I eat a hard-boiled egg? No. No. Huh? They're okay. And stuff. What stuff? Well, for lunch on the third day, you get a hard-boiled egg and a slice of toast. I I will not eat a hard, and I certainly will not eat beets. Will I eat beets? No. No. No way. There isn't a Chinaman's chance in L. There's as much chance of my eating a cup of beets as there is eating head cheese. Oh, <laughs> I think I'm getting sick. Okay, here's a, a mobile in Miami. Hello. Uh, yeah, hi, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. Um, I want to talk about the Tom Green show. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed uh, the past couple of skits that they've done. I haven't I, seen it in uh, months. Yeah, I think they're trying to censor him for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they're trying to, like, I don't know. He's not being on the edge as he used to. Right. I don't know. Well, his like, show was much better when he was on the comedy, the original comedy network. It was a thousand times better. And since, like you say, he's been on MTV, it's uh, it's losing the edge, which is why I don't even watch it anymore. They showed the rerun so many times that you just forget about it. Well, I think, yeah, that that's that's another thing. I, I think they've, like, uh, watered him down, basically, with yeah. all the... With all the reruns, but I think it was on public access right. before, right. and then uh, his skits were like so original. He was great. He is great. It's just that uh, you know, if you don't let a guy do his thing, what's he gonna do? Yeah. Well, in, in in one of the skits, he goes to a restaurant and he has like this cubicle around him, and he's called the smoking cubicle. Yeah. And he says, uh, he asked the guy, uh, "Well, can I smoke here?" And he says, "No, no smoking, no smoking." And he goes, "Yeah, but I have my. I, th- I think he called it called it space, the personal uh, smoking. I don't know, cubicle thing. I don't know." And uh, he says, I can smoke in here because I'm not letting smoke out. And the guy gets all mad, and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, don't call the cops. You know, like real scared. I don't know. It's almost like if MTV is like pulling the chain on him a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think they're letting him run wild. Well, you know, everything MTV touches, it <laughs> turns to crap. <laughs> all right, Neil. Have a great day, God pal. bless you. Tom Green is God. We love Tom Green. We just don't like MTV because there's living proof. Music television. Do they show any music? No. Maybe like four videos a day, and it's the same ones every stinking day. 
everyone, every, every, same videos daily, and I'm not talking about Carson. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line out of town line eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. I could actually read this on the air this diet, but then of course they'd have to write it down and they won't anyway. It's fairly it's simple. I mean, there's not like a whole lot you get to eat, or you couldn't lose forty pounds in a month. But it's supposed to be on like a chemical. You know what I mean? The balance of the food that you're eating cause you to lose the weight. Like, for example, the first day for breakfast, you have black coffee or decaf or tea or water, plus a half a grapefruit, slice of toast, and two te- te- uh, teaspoons of peanut butter, which I'm assuming you put on your toast. For lunch, half a cup of tuna, slice of toast, and coffee or tea. And for dinner, two slices of any kind of meat, about three ounces, a cup of string beans, a cup of beets, ooh, <laughs> a small apple, and a cup of vanilla ice cream. Oh! And then I got news for you. If I was on this diet, I would love vanilla ice cream. I'd love any flavor. I don't think, could you think, could you think you could do it for three days at a time and lose 10 no. pounds? No? I guess I could eat the beets. I could eat like, you know, just make that ugly look on your face like, eh, and just uh, grin and bear it, you know? Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Fort Lauderdale. Hello, Neil. Yes? You know, if you go back about halfway through, uh, Mitch's phone call, you roll the tape back, you can catch when he's talking about Miami and what kind of a crappy place it is. Yeah. You can catch the golden tones of Mitch Lewis saying, it's a nasty hole. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. And I wanted to call you and find out if you... What was that? That was him. Oh. Five six seven oh five sixty. Yeah, very funny. Five six seven oh five sixty. Pound five sixty. Yeah, he's chronic anyway. Whatever that was. Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Hi. Yes, sir. How you doing, Neil? Okay. Listen, I wanted to talk about uh, Alan Greenspan. Yeah. And you had mentioned that earlier on. I know you also think that a lot of people in here in Miami don't have any political knowledge. I agree with you. Um, but I wanted to. I actually wanted to disagree and dispute your fact that uh, he was bankrupt in America. Yeah. You know, my, I don't know. Well, I didn't say bankrupting America. I said he's bankrupting me. Well, no, I understand what you're saying. But every you know what? Day that I want, every time he comes on here, the market all of a sudden overreacts and the Dow starts dropping and dropping and dropping. All of the Nasdaq's up 49 points for anybody that's got tech stock out there. Rhymes with Drek, but anyway. No, you're right, but you know what? i got to tell you, I, I actually think he's one of the most honest politicians, or not even polit- political figures. Yeah. You know, that's out there because, you know, if I trust anybody out there, I mean, the economy, in my opinion, is the way it is because of him, Robert Rubin. Right, that oh, team Robert, right there. Robert Those... Rubin, but Robert Rubin is gone. See, that's the problem. I think once Robert Rubin left and they brought this uh, fat uh, Goy in there, what the hell is his name? The other one that <laughs> I don't know what his name is. Oh, I know you're talking about, the his deputy guy. Me. Yeah, the uh, fat, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, this guy got all, everybody panicky. And uh, they, why, why does this guy need to be on there every week? Why can't he, like, prepare a written report for them? Why do we have to put it on television? Why does everybody have to get all bent out of shape and panicky about it? Why does uh, it's he all drama. Out of you know how way? it is. Man. Yeah, but why does he have to threaten all the scare the crap out of all the investors? What's the point? You know, I, I no, I agree with you. I mean, I mean it's, just, it's drama, I, dude. My, you know how it is. It's, it's political drama. If my nose were that big, maybe I would smell inflation all over the place, <laughs> even if it didn't exist too. You know what I'm saying? I know. I, I think that's his problem. He he smells it. No, I, I I know how it is, man. Listen, you know, another thing is uh. What what is that? What's that uh, sound? No, that's here? that's a little help me guy. You know, it's just a, a stressful job, stressful people. You know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyhow, no, but listen, um, I also think that uh, you know, I mean, all these guys that are running in these primaries, Bush and. Kane and, and yeah. Bradley, you know, I mean, screw that, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I mean, Greenspan, I mean, that's that's where the money counts. And, yeah, I mean, he plays with it. He's playing with you know, He's playing with us. That's the problem. It don't feel good. <laughs> okay, have a great day, pal. You too, bud. Okay. So there's a guy that likes Alan Greenspan. Boy! I don't like him. I don't like him. Dangerous, devious with my money. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line, 877-785-6345. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hollywood. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Um, I was saying, uh, don't eat that cheese and don't eat the meat. But uh, I'm glad to hear Colin's rectified. Um, yeah. I wanted to mention uh, FCC. Rectified? That's it. I wanted to mention the uh, FCC, uh, kind of along those same lines as Greenspan, where it's representation, but it's uh, appointed by the president. And uh, now there's something up where they're trying to make – uh, cellular phone, so you don't have to pay for incoming calls. And mm-hmm. uh, most of Europe uses this already. Right. But it's uh, just here in the U.S. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, the only two things the FCC should do is allocate frequencies 
and uh, keep acquisition groups from buying up all the local stations. Right, and that's, that's the only thing they ought to be doing. That's in the beginning. That's all they were authorized to do. Nobody ever authorized them to be the word police. This is something they made up as they went along uh, at the behest of people like Jesse Helms and other right-wing fanatics like that. That's what this is all about, the word police. Yeah. Well, that's about all I have. Okay, and have a great day. Thanks. And screw the FCC. That's our comment here. Yes! Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Capri, I'm mean, when I say Caprita, well, he's usually the one that's calling us from out there. Mick Lewis is absolutely correct. And my my biggest problem is that instead of just being able to sit back and understand, I mean, after twenty four years, you think anybody with a half a brain would understand where he is? Shouldn't I understand? Uh-huh. Yeah, but I don't. I just can't accept it. It's like after working for this outfit for well over two years now. Perhaps they have almost three years' worth of contact with the Wanna Beasleys and Greg Fraud, or Reed, whatever his name is. They're not, they're not going to change. They're not going to get any better. So why do I delude myself? Why do I frustrate myself over the fact that you can't make gold out of chicken crap? You can't do it. It is what it is. I find myself saying that almost every day now on this show. Uh-huh. It is what it is. I mean, there's a word that I'm looking for. I think maybe the word is crap. That might be it. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, I am. Hello. Speak to me. Oh, Neil. How you doing? This is Data. I'm out of Fort Lauderdale. Yes, sir. I want to, I'm listening to your show for the first time, and I want to know uh, some comments were made to me about things that you said about black people. And I want to know what the comments are about Martin Luther Coons Day and why you're. No, 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 wait a minute. You're it. listening to the show for the first time. Yeah. And you had comments taken out of context, passed out of you, and you want to know what they meant. Does that, does that make any sense to you, sir? Well, I'm I'm trying to figure out what this show is about because I've heard some interesting things today, and I want to know if I want to keep listening to your show or not. Well, this see, is coming from way, somebody that listens to your I show every day. The way that I would listen to the show is if I enjoyed the show, I would listen, not because somebody else said that I said something or took it out of context. No, I'm not saying it because somebody else said it. I'm, I'm, talking, I'm getting it straight from the horse's mouth. That's from the, the way I am. From the horse's yeah. Uh, that's the way I am. I like to get things straight from the horse's well, mouth. Well, what would you like to know? I just want to know what's the what's the comment about Martin Luther King, Martin Luther Coon Martin Day, Luther and Coon, yeah. Coons being black and uh, Coons being referred to about black people and things like that. Well, coon, coons aren't black. What that's, color that's, are coons? Huh? What color are coons? What color are coons? Raccoons. Raccoons are gray. Gray? Yeah. What shade? What shade are they? You tell me. I don't I'm know. Asking what, you, what, I'm asking you a question what right shade, now. What shade are you? What shade am I? That's not the point. The point no, is no, I'm a black man, and I want to know. That is the point. You're talking about the shade of coons. I want to know what shade you are. I'm, I'm a lighter shade of brown. A lighter, you're like mocha? There you go. All right. Well, you're okay. Then we accept you into our program then. Oh, now I'm accepted because I look like mocha. If I, if I look like a dark top baby, then I wouldn't be accepted. Well, we'd, program, have, huh? we'd have to ask to have a much longer conversation. Well, we can have a conversation. I ain't got number time. Well, I don't. I have a commercial break, but have a great day. <laughs> oh. And I see. I should have pursued that. What does he mean? He ain't got nothing but time. Isn't this guy working or something? What's that? See, there's another ugly old stereotype. Like uh, these dark folks who got nothing but time on their hands and plenty of time because they're not working. Maybe he works like the late shift. You think? No. No. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the uh, out of time whatever it is AT and T wireless line. I'm all tongue tied after you hear about that Martin Luther Coon deal. This is five sixty Q A M. The Neil Rogers Show. Sports Radio 560 QAM. WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. This is Bob Dole, the face for ED, erectile dysfunction, speaking to you in front of a classroom of children in the heartland of America. You know, one out of every ten American males has some sort of ED. I've got five different kinds. Matter of fact, my plumbing is so messed up, Bob Dole pees out his belly button. Mr. Uh, Dole? Uh, yes, yeah, small person. What's ED? Uh, well, you know that, that feeling you get around your pelvis when you see Adrian Barbo? Woo! Uh, uh, how about Josie from Josie and the Pussycats? Well, how about uh, that genie in a bottle, girl? Oh, yeah. I know that feeling. Well, there you go. Well, Bob Dole doesn't have it. Uh, because of ED, no matter how much I rub, the genie stays in the bottle. <laughs> right now, I'm ten chapters into a Harlequin romance, and nothing, 
<laughs> Not even a stirring. I had the satellite dish put in so I could receive 600 channels of hardcore porn. Still nothing. What's that? Uh... Well, that's what your dad watches when your mom's upstairs reading. Did you ever notice your dad changes the channel real quick when you walk in and slides a pillow over his lap? Yeah. He's probably trying to find a way to work through ED. Either that or he's just a perv. Ah, ah. Bob Dole, sending a message to America's youth. Looky here, kid. Nothing. That is a doornail. 1202 at 560 WQM. Do we believe that? Uh -huh. We sure do. Hey, and there's another good one for you. Liddy Dole, whatever happened to her, huh? Remember that? Remember those two or three days when she was a candidate? Uh-huh. Liddy Duell. Oh, my God. What are these people thinking about? Everybody's going to be the president. And the people that step forward, the people that step up to the plate, 99% of them are like uh, morons, misfits, troglodytes. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line, the out-of-town line for the entire universe is sitting there waiting on you. Our poll question today, by the way, is are you a hockey fan? I think you're going to be amazed when you see the result on this. You think it was lopsided on the uh, John Henry in a baseball stadium? No, seriously, I think that this could cure me of uh, my uh, delusions. Are you a hockey fan, yes or no? Very simple. Keep it simple, Eric. That's all. Are you a hockey fan, yes or no? And we can give you a final tally on that stadium thing as soon as Eric uh, sends it over to us. Yeah, we'll do a different poll every day to get people over on neilrogers.com, let you put a little vote on there, get a little bit of response, see that Mitch Lewis might not be 100% correct, even though we know in our hearts that he is. Here's a call in Miami. Hello. Miami. Miami. Okay. Have a nice life. Here's a mobile in Hialeah. Hello. Good day, Neil. Yes, sir. Good day. Good day, Neil. Um, on the subject of uh, things that are never going to change for the better, like the Beasleys, um, I think bad, I mean, um, Sam Donaldson was a bad example to use as a, for, on the rug subject. Because that guy's going to look like a mule with a rug on no matter what company he uses. Uh-huh. Definitely. Yeah. The most, and the most horrid one of all has to be that school board guy, Frank. Yeah, he's got a nice piece. Man, and I, I think mean... He got, I think he bought that at a pet shop. Yeah, something like that. And my wife has him categorized as the most repugnant man in South Florida. Your what? My wife has him categorized as the most repugnant man in South Florida. Henry Fraud? Yes. Okay. She was quick to point out that Chupacula mouth that he has, too, by the way. Okay. You know, so, uh, all right, Neil. Okay, go gargle with Rinso and call us later. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Miami Beach. Hello. Chupacula, is that? Watch yourself. Cut, cut the crap now. <laughs> Neil, you yeah. know what I called uh, Alan Greenspan? Yeah. My breath. Because every time he's sick, man, the whole thing crumbles down. Uh huh. Let me take a while, guess. Uh, what's the, uh, the the stock you lost the money on? I, I can tell. I can almost bet that I got the right stock. Well, what are you saying? What are you? I don't. You know, the, you lost a lot of money. I didn't lose a lot of money. Anything on paper, I lost a lot of money. I didn't lose a lot of money. Well, on paper, on the stock market. Yeah. Right? I bet you I know what the stock the stock was. Yeah. Are you gonna tell me? If you, I'm going to give you a guess. I'm going to tell you a stock, okay? Okay. Lucent. Lucent Technology. No. No? No. Ah. Never had one cent. I already said on the air what it was. It was the right at the Netherlands Equifund. Oh. Oh, that's it. Oh, that we be. bought at $10.12, and as of yesterday, it was like nine fifty-seven to make it a little comeback, and hopefully it gets near $10, and I'll dump it. you got a lot of money. It's on paper. What is it? you got a lot of money in it. Yeah. Only, only well, how do you know how much money I have in it? Well, I don't know. I, I guess like forty six thousand dollars that you lost, and that's uh, only when you lost uh, a few cents. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm a small uh, potato here. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Do you have any idea what that what he was talking about? He was obviously one of your people. I'd uh, five six seven oh five. That was my stockbroker, as a matter of fact. Yeah, probably either your stockbroker or your uh, maybe it was your uh, accountant. No, he's one of your people. You notice? Uh, no, he is not one of my people. Oh, yeah. I have nothing Can't to do with that. Him. Off. Yes, I can. I ha I disavow any relationship in any way, shape, or form with the, your accountant, David. He's laying his tefillin. He's rocking. He's hocking. He, he is a, a crazy person. Certifiable. Belongs in a rubber room in a straitjacket somewhere with all the El Hasidim. And I'll say it again, that piece on 60 Minutes on Sunday night. I'm sure that a lot of people in this audience saw it, but I'm sure that also that the Jews are too embarrassed to talk about it. 
and what they're doing to those kids, and they're rocking back and forth, and they're hocking and reading all that crap, and they're growing their payas, and he's kissing the mezuzah on the outside of the door before he goes in the building. Oh, Jesus, God. Talk about Stone Age. The cavemen are embarrassed by it. Here's Pompano. Hello. Pompano. Neil. Yes, sir. Did you happen to watch Amherst United at the Apollo the other night? Did no. you catch any of that at all? No, I did not. Did you see Bill Bradley and uh, Gore pandering to the black community? Like, that, to me, that's the Christian. Well, if I didn't see it, how would I have... Well, uh, I mean, you didn't, see, you didn't see any excerpts or anything on I TV? I saw a couple of clips, yeah. I mean... Where, but the clips they show basically are where they're, you know, screaming at each other and calling each other names and... Do, uh, do you think it's worse to pander to the to the... Christian right or to the Christian left, like that, like the Republic. I mean, like the Democrats are doing. Well, what is the Christian left? What well, is that? the Reverend Al Sharpton. That's about as left as it gets. Yeah. And uh, the he's, people, he's, Johnny he's, Cochran, he's, and the audience, who does he, who does he, Sir, who does he represent? Well, he, he's he, one. He's, he's a, one person. Yes, but he he represents a good proportion of the black community's feelings. No, 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 he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Oh, uh, I, I think you're wrong, Neil. I mean that. <laughs> He is considered a, 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 a very, I mean, he only got to meet with Let me ask you I this. i got to kiss his ass. Is, is the black, do you want to have a conversation or you just want to scream? No, go ahead, sir. Is the black community trying to tell us, change the laws and tell us how to live? Yeah, they want to change the, they don't want to, to deal with affirmative action. Sure, there, there's things that they want to do. No, I'm not talking about are there things that they want to do, but are they trying to impose their religious views on the rest of us? Uh, is, is that comparison you're making to the Christian right then, right? Yes, because, you know, you're the one that made the comparison, not me. You're the one who said they're worse, and I'm asking you, are they trying to impose well, their Well, doesn't bother you that he's called the Reverend Al, and he's very sir, heavy he, into politics? Sir, what difference does it make? How about well, the Reverend Jesse Jackson? Everybody and their thing. brother-in-law is a Reverend. And obviously, you don't like Al Sharpton, and guess what? Neither do I. And have a great day. Good golly, Miss Molly. Woo! Thank God we got so many political or stupid people here in South Florida. See, I guess this guy, it doesn't bother him that, you know, George Bush spoke at Bob Jones University or that Gary Bauer is endorsing John McCain or that Pat Robertson made those phone calls in Michigan. None of that seems to bother this guy. Al Sharpton has got nothing to do with my life. Okay, sir? Nothing. Nine minutes after 12 o'clock at 560 WQ. Ooh, frosty nads. In theaters now, from the director of The Talented Mr. Ripley, it's The Talented Mr. Bill. Hey, look, everybody. It's my new chihuahua. And he's really hungry. Yo quiero taco. Oh, no. Not the paint. Not the paint. The Talented Mr. Bill. And coming soon, The Talented Mr. Peabody. My name is Peabody. I suppose you know yours. 1214 at 560 WQAM. Oh! Don't forget our poll question on the neilrogers.com on our website. Are you a hockey fan? Yes or no. Very simple, very easy, could be very revealing, could have a dramatic effect on altering the future shows that we do. 567 oh, 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Out of town line is available for you, 877 785 6345. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Mobile Hello. in Boca, yes, sir. Hey, Neil, how's it going this okay. morning? Can't be quite as politically as astute as that last guy talking about Sharpton, so I'm going to change the subject, talk a little hockey here. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to anybody else over the last couple of days talking about the McSorley deal, but in between your breaks, I flip over to that other station, the fan, and they got two guys over there that probably wouldn't know hockey puck from a baseball talking about if McSorley should be uh, uh, prosecuted in the, <laughs> in the court mm-hmm. and all the so-called... Uh, I guess Florida fans calling in to give their two cents worth. And uh, it's just ridiculous. just goes to prove that, you know, everybody down here that claims to be a fan, just uh, they're idiots. They have no they have no. I, I, I had a whole bunch of calls about that yesterday because I hadn't seen it because the game didn't end until like 1 in the morning. It was in Vancouver. And I uh, watched a little bit of early part of the game, and it was like a blowout. It was 4 nothing Vancouver, so there was no point in watching it. So I hadn't seen it. And yesterday I got a call about it, and the guy says, oh, I thought, would have thought you would have started your show with that. So I turned on ESPN. I saw the hit, which was grotesque and unacceptable. Right. And he ought to be suspended the rest of the year, and hopefully they'll make him retire and get his ass out of the game already. But, uh, but you know, when you try to talk about what's going on here or in our arena or with our <laughs> team, you forget it. You can't buy a call. I mean, it's a, it's a frustration. It's unbelievable. And yet because, uh, see, again, it was an act of violence, so right away everybody's into it. And they've shown it on TV at least 60,000 times since it happened right. two nights ago. And it's and it, and it's it was I'm a huge hockey fan and you know it's a great sport and there's definitely no place for what he did. Absolutely. But it's not. like all these people calling in now. 
he should be, you know, throw him in jail. And he, I mean, I'm sure he'll get the, the remaining 23 games that Boston's yeah, got left. Right. But that's uh, ridiculous. And uh, one other thing, I know you got the dish, so you get the NHL package. But sure. you ever watch uh, ESPN and watch Gary Thorne and Bill Clement do the games? Yes. I think I don't know what your what your you know I like those guys. They're I great do. Too. I think they're very good. I think that Gary Thorne calls every game like it's the seventh game of the right. Of the Stanley yeah, Cup. They do a real good job. And I know you're friends with Rimmer anyway, so could you pass on a hint to him and Poppin and have them, you know, have them flip them on every once in a while to take a hint? I mean, Rimmer's half asleep, <laughs> and Poppin, uh, you know, he's telling me what happened in the game five minutes ago after he talks about his Islander days. Okay. Say hi to Dan Kelly. See ya. And Bill Hewitt. Five six seven oh five sixty and Danny Gallivan. Pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. See that ties right in with our question on the website. Are you a hockey fan? I think. Well, I'm not going to say what I think. Could be real revealing. 56705. Oh, I mean, what is there to say about the Marty McSorley and Donald Bershear incident? What is there to say? It's unacceptable. It's grotesque. It was uh, subhuman. And uh, get get his ass out of there. That's all. Not a lot to say about it. It was it was nauseating, puke inducing. And Donald Bershear, by the way, I ought to point out, he used to be strictly a goon when he was Montreal. Uh, he's come a long way. And he's like a skilled player now. In fact, just the other night against Ottawa, scored an unbelievable, a highlight reel uh, goal for uh, Vancouver. So he's not only a fighter, but he's like a real player now with some real skills, which ought to be something to think about here for these so-called Panther fans who are so obsessed with somebody that wears the same uniform number. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Boy, you talk about chronic. Man, can this be the same Ted David we spoke to two days ago? Uh -huh. Wow. Neil. Ted. What's going on? I heard you make some uh, disparaging remarks about not watching CNBC anymore because of Mr. Greenspan. I said I'm not watching anymore today. Oh, okay. Until you get his uh, big nose off of your screen. I see. Okay. I was concerned. You went into a panic? Yeah, you well, know, I'm down here now, but, you know, I mean, when I get back, well, what I do you mean you're down here? I thought I saw you yesterday. No, no I'm, right, I'm right at the moment, in fact. I'm driving on Glades Road heading for 95. Really? Well, if you get out of the uh, if you get out of the mall and uh, had to turn down all these people who keep recognizing me, it gets very annoying. And they're all looking for stock tips too, no doubt. Well, that's the only thing. Come on, Mr. David. We know you're holding back. Give us something good. Give us something good. Actually, what I get is, listen, you must be rolling in it, but you must be. You'll get all the good stuff. Yeah, there. Then, then those are the ones that are rolling in it, and it's not money either. Well, look at this. The Dow's only down 71, and the Nasdaq's up 63. So it isn't all bad. But why do you guys keep putting him on there? Why do you keep doing that? You know, uh, because you I, know as well, and I realize you don't make the decision, but you know as well as I do that every time his face shows up on a screen now, and even if he farts and it's not the right flavor, uh, you know the way the the market is now. Everybody's running, and they're on the phone, and they're on the internet. Uh, just we just don't need to see him anymore. Let I got to tell you though, you know what? The ratings every time he's on, the ratings go up. Yeah, and then our in our uh, portfolio goes down. Well, that's another issue, and uh, yeah, and I, I frankly, you know, I, I'm not supposed to have any opinions. If I had opinions, of course, I'd be wondering why he has to keep repeating the same thing over and over again. But I, I'm not allowed to have that opinion. Well, so I why, don't. why is he on here again today? I mean, this is the Humphrey Hawkins hearings, well, which you know, I thought Humphrey were last Hawkins, week. It's uh, Senator Paula Hawkins and then Hubert Humphrey got together and decided on this twice a year congressionally mandated appearance. But they're both dead. The they're, 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 wants... they're both dead. Yeah, I know, but, but the legislation lives on. <laughs> oh, I see. I mean, once they, once they both bit the dust, couldn't we have gotten rid of this? I mean, and, and why can't he testify? Why can't he present a written report, you know? Well, actually, some of the questions he does answer in, 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 in written form, but the fact is this is the, uh, the equivalent, the Fed chairman's equivalent of the State of the Union address. It's the State of the Economy address twice, once to each House of uh, Congress, and that's the way it works. Yeah. But, you, uh, see, with, with all the, and by the way, I noticed that GE, which is your parent company, I don't want to get you nervous around it because you're well aware of it, but GE is really, since he opened up his mouth, taking a big dive. Well, oh, GE, uh, because of the, uh, it has the financial arm, a GE Capital. It's considered a financial stock by some. Yeah. And on days when there's concern about tightening, you see the bank stock, the financials go down, and to the extent that GE is a, a financial stock to some at some times, it goes down. Yeah. And you on know days, what? On days when the market is doing well, it's not a financial stock that makes those in refrigerators. <laughs> but it's a great buying opportunity. Yeah. And what did I tell you about that, which I can't mention because we're still in the quiet period, but about the company that owns this radio station? What did I tell you about that? That's going public, isn't it? Well, that's it already, it already has. It's already in the uh, stumper, like I predicted. It's already opened at 15 and a half. It's 11 and 7 eighths. Was, was today the IPO date? No, it's your, your week and a half late. Oh, gee, don't, ask, don't, ask, vacation. don't ask this Ted David any questions, you folks out there <laughs> in the mall. He doesn't know uh, from squat. I'm on vacation. I don't pay attention when I'm on vacation. Well, it's a good thing you're not paying any attention to that one, believe me. <laughs> What's the ticker symbol on it? 
You don't want to know. <laughs> Come on. I don't. I have no idea what the ticker symbol is. On on your company's stock, you don't know the ticker symbol. No. I, in fact, when I go on the internet to check it out, just to make sure, I have to look up a B E A S L E Y in my. Uh, I have to type. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Okay, Beasley, Beasley. Beasley I, can't, got I, it. Can't talk, I can't talk about it on the air because we're in the quiet period. You I understand. understand. Well, our quiet period is. Uh, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go to my quiet period, but again, always a pleasure to hear you on the air, Neil. And uh, I just wanted to be sure you weren't counseling people to tune out of CNBC on a permanent basis. We love CNBC, but as I have it on there right now, you got all the uh, there's the cyclicals, and here's Walmart and Home Depot and the Dow and the Nasdaq and the S and P and the 30 year bond. But in the upper right hand corner, you got your friend up there again. Why can't you just, if you got to have him on there, make it like a real small, tiny picture so only you know, people with real good eyesight can see it? I have suggested to management actually that we use the SAP channel, you know, special audio program right. channel. Squeeze him up into a box, and, right. and if you want to hear him, you push the SAP channel, and you can hear him, and otherwise we go on with Market Watch or Power Watch or whatever when you, we're doing. When you just said squeeze him into a box, if you had any idea how appealing that sounds to me. I've got to go, Neil, but okay. have a great afternoon here in South Florida. <laughs> See you, <laughs> Ted. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ted David says squeeze him into a box. Isn't that what he just said? Uh -huh. That's what I heard him say Boy. about Alan Greenspan. <laughs> oh, there he is. Taking a See, and now he got me to turn it back on again. That's why he called. Oh, man. Let's get back to much music and get something good on there, okay? Maybe we'll get 98 degrees or something worthwhile. Or even that Jessica bitch that, uh, that's uh, practicing abstinence. 5670560, oh, pound 560. How do you practice abstinence, huh? How do you practice it? Maybe she'll get it right one of these days. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they should change the name of the group from 98 to like 69 degrees because they certainly must be doing something. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And her, too. Here's a call in Miami. Hello? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, I am. Neil. Yes. I just called to everybody's telling you to leave Miami and things like that, but I really don't want to see you go. Yeah. It's, I'm one of your younger listeners, and we love you down here. I know. We can't. We wouldn't stand to see I you go. I love it here, man. I'm. I'm. Uh, this. This town is what life is all about. Uh, I don't know. You, you might not like it, but I love it here. Got to do something for you. Got great weather. We got friendly people. We got a lot of fun. A lot of entertainment. A lot of excitement. All kinds of gambling. Casinos. Big name entertainment. What more could you want? Uh, we got you. We got manatees. We got caterpillars. We got all kinds. We got c cocoons. What more do you want? Yeah, Have a great day, amigo. I'm not going anywhere. We got those coons. Have a great day. Yeah. Let's start talking about those coons again. That brother will call back in again with his uh, wider shade of pale or whatever he was talking about. Now, we like him. He was a light-complected guy. Not that we're racist on this show, but if you're a little bit too dark, we're just uh, not that we don't like you. We're just scared to, uh, to hell of you is the way it works out. Well, here's some lunch. That's beautiful. That's nice. I'll have a little fork with that, and I'll be all set. Just fork it over. Oh. Well, wait a minute. What, what's this? You said you wanted the same thing. No, no, I, I said the same stuff that we always get. I didn't say necessarily this, although I will pick through this. But, gee, you know, you, you. thanks, Brad. Thanks to our friends at Tony's. I don't want to start pitching because, believe me, never look a gift horse in the Rectum. mouth. Great free meal. I mean, boy, we can hop up the free food here like you wouldn't believe. That's what it's all about, getting a free meal, getting a big fat paycheck, which George has got one of those two down to a science. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Out of town line, 877-785-6345. And just to show you how boring this town is, like Mitch Lewis said, you know what I'm saying, Mitch? Oh, right. Hey. Ted David comes down here. Twice in three days he's calling on this show. Because his whole experience here in South Florida comes here to listen to this show, to drive around and hear this show. This is the only thing. So you people out there that give me a song and a dance and a hard time, if I left here this time, they would officially pronounce this town dead, D-O-A, in a box, like Alan Greenspan. Isn't that what Ted said? Uh-huh. Here's a mobile on the alley. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. How are you? Great. Great. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm an old-time friend. Uh, I've been on a few times. I'm from the Finger Lakes. Up where you from? Uh -huh. I have a uh, I have a little stock tip. I don't know if you've ever gotten into the Rexall, the new line that they have. I've been in Rexall. Have. I had a prescription filled there once about ten years ago. Well, now they're all on the internet. And if you would go on uh, Rexall dot com backslash B Fisher, you can get a newsletter. And uh, if, you, if you get one of their uh, websites, you can buy their stock for half price, and it's a heck of a deal right now. Who is and it? Just, excuse me? Re who, what stock? Uh, Rexall. 
you know, the drugstore that we used to have up north, and uh, I'm from Union Springs up there. But why should you be able to buy their stock at half price? What is the rationale behind it? Well, what, what happens is if you go to that rexall.com backslash D. Fisher, you can get a newsletter. Yeah. Um, they let they let the people sell their uh, items now worldwide. Yes. And if you do get into that, well, then you can um, get a deal on their stock. And uh, instead of getting how, how their, is that possible? How can anybody buy a stock at half price? I I, I don't uh, understand that. Well, if you, if you get into the uh, newsletter, into that website, yeah. what you do is you can you can get your own website and sell their items off the internet, which is basically a word by mouth, and they get. Also, in other words, it's like a pyramid scheme. It's like Amway. Well, not really on the internet, because, yeah. Because they. Uh, okay. Thanks a lot. See you in Geneva. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT. Do you have any idea what he was talking about? No, no. Пожалуйста, хватит сосать. Our secrets lonely. They know the daddy of our two kids is David Crosby. We're two lesbians We couldn't come free Here is your cup Fill it up Work, work Thirty-two at five sixty Q. I was just uh, Miguel was just in here for a couple of minutes. I said, "Hey, Miguel, ever considered being a sperm donor?" He ran out of here like you wouldn't believe. Don't forget, Miguel will be with us with George and Boca Brian and yours truly at Seminole Indian Casino in Hollywood this Saturday noon to two. We'll have the prize wheel there. We'll be giving away a bunch of stuff. Probably not anything really too great, but we'll be there. And there'll be gambling going on, whether the Herald likes it or not. How do you like that, huh? In case you missed the beginning of the show, turn to page fourteen B. In today's Miami Herald, and read that first editorial, a questionable bet, and it says it's bad enough that the state sanctions gambling in any form. One of the a line that will live in infamy, one of the worst lines written in the history of journalism, and I use that term really, squirt squirt loosely. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Let's take a call in Sunrise. Hello, Sunrise. Neil. Yes, sir. The game the other day in the afternoon, at, you know, the Monday. Yes. The glass broke, right? Yes. From what I hear is that they they only had two pieces of glass, and one was too small, and the other one was the right size. Yeah. Now suppose there uh, another glass got knocked out. Well, it didn't, so have a great day. Suppose the roof fell into your house in about two minutes, okay, pal? Suppose Chicken Little came flying through the roof <laughs> and crapped all over your head. Another one of those uplifting calls from the real happy people in South Florida. God. It took 20 minutes, which I would say is about the average time it takes to fix every year. I've seen that happen a few times. doesn't happen very often. And it took 20 minutes, and life went on, and that was it. and had no bearing on anything else. But here's a guy who's got such a rich, full life that he's sitting there worried about, suppose another pane of glass would have broken, and they wouldn't have had the right size. 16,000 open lines here all of a sudden now, 5670560. I think I'll just get Mitch Lewis to call back in again. And he and I will just go on and on and on and do a monologue for hours and days and weeks about this deadly-ass place. Here's a lady in Miami. Hello. Lady in Miami. Hello? Yes, ma'am. 
can you be nice enough to tell me where I could get that diet that you mentioned on the radio? I heard of that diet 20 years ago, yeah. and it used to be called the airline stewardess diet. Yeah. And I have been searching high and low for that diet, and it was a miracle that I heard you mention it. On well, what, what, what did you hear about it? Well, that, did you hear that it works? It, it sheds off weight miraculously. Really? Yes. Well, I can imagine why, because first of all, you're not eating very much, and even if there isn't anything with the chemical breakdown that they say, you're eating so little that I can imagine you'd be losing some weight. But 10 pounds in three days sounds pretty exciting to me. It sure does. Yeah. And uh, and you don't go hungry. So where can I go? Where can I find it? Where can I send away for it? I don't know, because somebody faxed it to me. Would you oh. like us to mail you or send you a copy of it? Oh, I'd be eternally grateful. Okay, hang on. Thank you. Wasn't that nice? Oh, you're a doll. I am. Today I'm, today I'm in a good mood. Hang on, sweetheart. Okay, line five. Listen, that lady wants a copy of this. Can we uh, do that? Can we make a copy of this and send it to her? How about we put it on the site? Well, we add a, well she's on five. Ask her if she has a computer, which I doubt. I mean, she sounded like somewhat of a uh, middle-aged lady. She didn't sound like somebody that has a computer, although she might. We can do that, too. Then we won't have a million people calling in and saying, will you send me a copy? Because the answer will be, no, no we won't. What? Oh, well, be sure to bring it back because I'm going to have to read it on the air because inquiring minds want to know. And then a lot of people in the audience will get real sick and maybe die from it. And then they'll say, see, it's because of that fat bag on the radio. We went on that diet. I'm not recommending it. Somebody just faxed it to me. Find out if she's got a uh, computer or somebody in the family's got a computer, and it'll be on our website, and then we won't have to do it. But I'll be more than happy to have uh, Joe's making a copy right now. We'll send her a copy of it, make her very happy, make her day. So I'm not such a prick after all today, right? No. Well, here's Sunrise. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, a couple things. First of all, um, uh, if you go out of town, you can listen to, your, to the station on the Internet, right? Yes. And a couple more things. For somebody like me that just wants to get in shape, I don't need to lose any weight. Do you know any of any specific diets? And also, shameless request, if you could just play the Al Gore, um, doing that right now. All right, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Woo, he was good. He was good and he was fast, I'll tell you that. I mean, in no time at all. Squirt, squirt. He was done. Now, what do you want to hear, the Al Gore Macarena? And no, I don't know of any such thoughts, sir. I'm sorry. Al Gore. Al Gore, as you have never heard or seen him before. Four years ago, you gave me your nomination to be vice president. This is some crowd. I've been watching you doing that Macarena on television. And if I could have your silence, I would like to demonstrate for you the Al Gore version of the Macarena. I am not trying to do Macarena. 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 Would you like to see it again? Tango mucha compasión. Tengo mucha emoción. When your alarm goes off in the morning, Macarena. When one of your children reaches for cereal and fruit, Macarena. 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 Oh, boy. Well, today is the day, but if you would have done it when I told you, you wouldn't be losing as much as you're going to lose today. I can't tell you what we're talking about with Joe Costello on the air, but... Uh, Only $50. Yeah, that'll give you a clue. Why wouldn't you listen to me? I mean, do I have some vested interest one way or the other? I mean, I try to give you a good piece of advice. I told you in the first place, don't buy it, but you won't listen to me. Maybe when it's down to about five would be a good time to sell it. That would be good. Maybe he reckoned your decision was personal in nature. No, it's based on personal knowledge and experience. That's what makes it that much, the cheese that much more binding, as in, right. That's okay. Hey, listen, when it gets down to 5 sixteenths, you'll be in great shape. Just like that Boston chicken, uh, Schmidt. 21 before uh, what? Oh, and I was speaking of Ted David, all the experts on CNBC, that was like two years ago. Oh, yeah, Boston market. This is going to, it's very underpriced. It's only 15. But all, all the uh, broker, all the uh, hotshot houses were recommending it. Yeah. What is it now? One one five hundred and thirty seconds, something like that. Uh huh. Yeah. It's not Boston chicken. It's just chicken Schmidt now is what it is. I'm a fat Jew. 
It's always the same old story. I want to have sex with women, but I hate dating. I certainly don't want to get married again. Excuse me, have you tried a hooker? A hooker? What's that? Yes, throughout the ages, the male of our species has relied on women of casual moral stock who proudly exchange sexual favors in return for a small one-time monetary stipend. I got me a hooker to do that thing my wife usually only does on my birthday. I done paid a hooker, too, so I don't have to keep chasing after Bessie no more. Ain't that right, girl? Ah. Since the days of the early settlers, from bricklayers to circuit court judges to our brave fighting men overseas, working girls have served a valuable role in our communities, providing that needed release. Fat housewives are just too busy and today's modern fast-paced world to accommodate. Wow, Pop. I can't wait till I'm old enough to get me a smelly, disease-ridden cesspool of a broad. <laughs> Someday, son. Someday. To learn more about the fascinating world of hookers, consult your local public library. Oh, boy. Here's here's a thing called RadioDigest.com, another local radio yenta that's writing about uh, people like Mindy Lang. Have you ever heard of this? Oh, boy. You don't want to hear about it. Hey, he's got a big piece. Let me give you a clue who else he writes about in here. Yeah. Yeah, veteran broadcasters among us. We in South Florida are fortunate enough <clears throat> that several major market radio pros, either retired or still on the air, are very much alive and well in the area. It wasn't that long ago that we saw Johnny. Remember we went over and got the guided tour of the Cox building over there a couple of years ago? Did he look alive to you? No. I just spoke to him. He's alive. How can you tell? But at any rate, it goes on and on about the Johnny Dark. And at the end of it, it's kind of interesting because it says... Johnny Dark said it! Okay, 14 to 1 at 560. Well, now what is this? What is this with these phones this week? This week is crap, man. I, I just don't get it. We went into the break. We had to have at least six or seven calls, didn't we, when we went into the break? Uh-huh. Yeah. Now there's one. They not only don't care enough to send their very best, but they're in a hurry these days. They're real, real busy. They're getting ready for the Grammys tonight. They're going out and buying 20 or 30 kegs of beer, getting all ready for the Grammys, buying a bunch of snacks, you know. Here's the mobile in Hialeah. Hello. Good morning. They're getting you know, their cargo like, Santana blow-up dolls. Yes, sir. I'd like to talk a little bit about the 2000 elections. I want to know. You want to know? Yeah. I want to know who are these people who are believing anything that George W. Bush is saying. Well, obviously there aren't too many of them, sir, because he's uh, losing his ass. But he's got some. Uh Uh-huh. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Out of town line, 877-785-6345. Retardo. El Retardo. That was the one call we had left on the board, too, by the way. That was the one that hung on. El Retardo. Did it get on the air? No. No. Here's a lady mobile in Miami. Hello. Neil? Yes, ma'am. How are you? Okay. You know, you are so funny. I just wanted to call and say that not all of us are morons. We love to listen to you. You're funny. You get us home. You're yeah. fabulous. And where's and where's the response? Where oh, are no. the people? Where are the calls? Where's something? Where's the, uh, you know, where's the uh, beef? Well, they're probably a little bit, shoot, I'm stuck in traffic, intimidated. But um, can I have a real quick shameless request? They're intimidated by what? Well, because I think they're afraid that if they sound like a moron, you're going to bust them. Well, well, listen, if they're listening to the show, I mean, they have a lot of companies, so what difference does it make talking about morons? <laughs> listen, could you play Joyce for the elders with the toaster? That cracks me up, baby. Okay. Thank you. You got it. Bye. Hi, this is Jocelyn Elders, and I'm mad. Mad at those right-wing sons of bitches that forced Bill Clinton to fire me. Just who do the hell they think they are? All I was trying to do was deal with the reality of sex and teenagers. Maybe if Jesse Helms had busted the chip or Newt Gingrich had butted the corn a little more, they wouldn't be so uptight. Flogging the dog never hurt anybody. And if people did a little more of it, we might save some lives. Hell, if Clinton just stayed home and spanked the monkey, he'd even be in less hot water. Teaching kids about masturbation would be no big deal. We could even take some standard teaching tools and just twist them around a little bit like see Dick Run. When you see Dick Run, get to the doctor because you picked up a bad case of crouch cricket. Folks, we got to get real about the realities of the world we live in. There are too many kids out there taking a baloney ride and parking their yacht in Hare Harbor. Now, if we just teach them to stay home and paddle the pickle, 
pump the python, walk the dog, wax the carrot, or tickle the taco, we'd all be better off. And that's all I have to say. Now, I'm going home now and see if Mr. Elders wants to pop it in the toaster, inhale an oyster, and buzz the brillo. All right. 11 before 1 at 560 WKM. we got Hank and Chulis today at 2 o'clock, Book Shabby at uh, 6 to 6.30 briefly. And then we got Panthers pregame at 6.30. Big, big, gigantic game tonight. Panthers at the Washington Capitals, 7 o'clock tonight. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. The toll-free line is 877-785-6345. How come nobody has called who knows about this St. Joe Hospital Medical Center diet that was faxed to me in that very nice letter? Well, of course, she wanted, which we're glad to send her a copy of it, but they're much more likely to call when they want as opposed to giving us some information that might be useful to everybody else. Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Okay, sir. I think that guy before, he'd be wanting to know. He'd be wanting to know uh, what they'd be talking about. Yeah, George he'd be wanting to get a life. He'd yeah. be wanting it, yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, um, I, I voted many times yesterday on the website. Did you get the poll results back yet, by chance? What do you mean you voted many times? On, well, on the uh, on your poll, did you get the results back yet? Yeah. Did, did, you, did you did you get the results? How I, many times did you vote? Twice. Oh. Well, I, I wanted to, but I didn't want to uh, skew it too much. You know, then it would be. But uh, what was the result yesterday? Two hundred ninety-nine no and 40, uh, 41 yes. I think those people that said forty-eight yes, I think 41. they should be. They should go out and be lynched. Because yeah, but I think you know, Beefo voted 10 times. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I think uh, John Henry voted the other 38 times. Could be. Um, but uh, I know uh, you don't like taking requests too much, but I got one shameless one. You played the, uh, We uh, went on a trip and we heard the anesthesia guy. Could you play him? Anesthesia guy? You remember him? The guy, uh, he was off your uh, Nugget CD. Anesthesia guy? You're, yeah, the guy uh, about the Elvis stamp. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll okay. work on it. Okay. Thanks, Love you, Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Is there got anything in there that we have to bleep out? No. Oh, okay. Hey, I think the anesthesia guy is perfect for today uh-huh. for this audience. We have six hundred open lines right at the moment. No waiting. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. How you doing, Neil? This is Pete. Okay. Uh, can you do me a favor? I'm a young guy. I'm twenty two. I voted once but I don't I don't really know who to vote for and I've been listening to you you seem pretty knowledgeable can you just tell me a little bit about the top candidates so maybe I can figure out uh who I should vote for no no five six seven read a newspaper okay watch the debates and do some homework okay come on Pete get with it stop acting like some kind of a quizzling you sound like a decent guy to me do a little bit of homework work on it and the uh information too and what's what's a good place that we can go? Well, you know, where's a good restaurant? And when we go to that uh, Chinese place, how do you really attack that buffet? How what kind of a game plan? Do you have that old Tom Landry uh, game plan that he left at his bedside just before he uh, hit the big uh, bullet, took that dirt nap, went to that big playing field in the sky? You got that? No. Oh. Come on, Pete. Start watching those goddamn debates. Start doing some reading. Start getting with it. Get on. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello, Neil. Yes, I am. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Yeah, I have a, a couple of quick questions for you about uh, George W. Bush. All that money that he's raised, the eighty million dollars plus. Yeah, most uh, all but fourteen million of which has been spent, by the way. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Where does it go? Do you have any idea? Where does it go? It goes to all the advertising and all the uh, campaign workers, but mostly for advertising, TV and radio. But doesn't he get does he get to keep any of that stuff after after the campaign? Well, I mean, uh, you know, what's a few million under the table? I don't know. Okay. Ask Larry, ask Larry Smith. He'll tell you. And, for, and also, on um, Jigs McDonald. Yeah. On the um, hockey plan, I'm not. I'm not sure if you're positive about him or not, but I just, he's a nice guy. I think he. I think he's very good. And what he does for Randy Muller during the broadcast is amazing because Randy used to sound like, what's his name, the, uh, Chris Moron? Yeah. He used to sound like a moron, and he used to always be cut off, and he was always hanging around, and, and he would be stepping on him, and it would sound very, very... Uh, Bush b- League. Buffoon. Yeah, yeah, like Bush a buffoon. League, yeah. Now, 
He sounds, he's very credible. He's, he's right on top of things. And, and the insight that he offers in the, during the course of the game. Well, Randy's a good guy if he stopped try, stop trying to be Mike Lang Jr. and stopped trying to be an amateur comedian. If Randy would just to play it straight, so to speak, and stop trying to be a buffoon, he'd be yeah. a hell of a lot better. He's a good guy, just like James is a good guy, but yeah. uh, that's the way it is. Well, I tell you, I, I think they compliment my personal opinion. I don't listen to the games and, uh, from beginning to end with those two, but, but uh, I think they complement one another very well, well. In fact, and, uh, and they give you a picture of what's going on. Even outside in the uh, hallway, they complement each other. I heard Jig saying something about Randy's new hairdo. So <laughs> have a great day, pal. Okay, one more thing. One yes, more thing. closing. Yes, I think closing very quickly. Yeah, the thing you said about the uh, the bitch yesterday and the uh, the, the um, and the other bitch from the uh, the American F and Way bitch. So many bitches and so little Unbelievable. time. Unbelievable! Right? You've got your head right on the money. Okay. And, and in closing, a shameless request. Yes. Bandolins. Remember the uh, for my good uh, our good articulate uh, black friend, the ambulance. Remember that one about the deer got you guys called nine one one. He got kicked uh, crack kicked out of him. No. By a deer. No. No. Okay. Have a great day. What do we do? We have the interpreter here today. No. We'd have a lot better show if I understood what all these people were talking about, or maybe not. Maybe it doesn't really make any difference. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line, eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five on the world famous line. Here's a lady in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Hey, I just called to tell you how great you are and sorry that we're all a bunch of morons. <laughs> I listen to you every day, and uh, I don't have any material either, but I just want to let you know, don't give up. You sound good. <laughs> I listen to you all the time. And about the debates last night, is that not a joke or what? About the what? All those debates that have been shown on TV. Instead of talking about things that the American people want to hear, they're sitting there putting each other down. Yeah. It's totally yeah. ridiculous. Who's the most uh, bigoted? Who hates the Catholics the most? Who hates the born-again Christians? Is that not goofy or what? Said something 20 years ago, yeah. Well, it's, uh, what do you expect? Yeah, yeah. So, but I think you sound great. Okay, have a great day, sweetheart. Take care. Bye-bye. She said, I sound great, right? Uh-huh. That's what she said. I sound great, God damn it. 5670560, uh-huh. oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. World famous line. Have we had a call from Fort Myers today? No. Naples? No. Port Charlotte? No. Port St. Lucie? No. No. Sarasota? No. No. Dunedin? No. Dunedin? No. We're not Dunedin. 1256 at 560 QAM. Ed Kaplan knows the scores. Starting at 10 till the last game ends. Weeknight only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Buttheads, it's the one to two hour. Deerfield. Uh, I have. I want to discuss something a little more serious, if I may. Well, I doubt it. Well, anyway, about five years ago, I was invited by the late Bill Calder uh, to come to the station, and I spent about 45 minutes on the air with him. Right. I had just written a book on the history of dentistry, and uh, he was very interested, and we got a lot of interesting calls. Uh-huh. But why I'm calling now is that there's been all this uh, talk about an Elvis Presley stamp and whether people should vote, whether a young Elvis or an old Elvis and so on. Yeah. Now, one of the biggest things that has ever happened in the history of mankind happened. You know what would be the perfect Elvis record for the stamp? I don't know. <laughs> Stuck on You would be pretty interesting, wouldn't it? That's a good answer. That could be the music behind the stamp. But anyway. Okay, now what I'm getting at is one of the greatest things that ever happened in the history of mankind to happened, up a little bit. Yeah. happened 150 years ago, two years from now, in 1844, and that was the discovery of anesthesia. And that was anesthesia? Anesthesia. I remember that by Pat Boone on Dot Records about 1957. <laughs> no, but now it's, I'm really serious. No. I don't want to be serious. But there's a real point to this. What is it? The, the audience is falling off like they're on no. anesthesia. No, because there's no other. Uh, the point is. Yeah. The point is that what is we have the been point? campaigning to try and get a postage stamp to the to the discoverer of anesthesia. Yeah. And the post office committee that handles this says that it's not of great enough significance. But apparently Elvis is more important than a man who gave... Damn right. Who gave the How many hits did they have? Well, the stop and think, there's no... What? There's no gift that was ever given to mankind that's more significant 
because with, with anesthesia, you can do every type of surgery that's done today. Yeah. Now, well, maybe we could have one with a scalpel on it, and then we could have some stamps like with little body parts on it. Well, I think that the And one with like a, uh, a thing of ether on one stamp and then like a gas mask on the other one? Well, the, the discovery... Just a stamp, sir. Why don't you lighten up a little bit? Who gives a crap what's on a stamp? Well, next time that you need to have anesthesia, if you need to go to a hospital... No, I got news for you. If I need to have anesthesia, whether I have a stamp or not, I'm still going to get it. <laughs> of course. But don't you think it's significant enough? I mean, I appreciate honor. my mother, too, but her face ain't on a stamp. <laughs> you really it's really very difficult talking to you. Well, of course it is. That's the idea. <laughs> well, I'm sorry That's Bill why I'm in, huh? I'm sorry Bill Calder is dead. I could talk to him. But it's too bad. Well, what does that mean? No, I mean it's Bill impossible. Calder was one of my best friends. What does that mean? You're sorry he's dead cuz you could talk to him. What if you didn't talk to him? <laughs> would you have like a different opinion? That, no. Then it would be okay, right? The point is I'm trying to generate maniac. Some, I'm trying to generate some interest. Well nobody cares. Don't you understand? Bill Calder didn't give a crap about anesthesia. Well, he called me and had me speak on his radio. Yeah, and he told me that it was the sorriest thing he ever did. He was, to, the, to the day he died, he regretted it. <laughs> on his deathbed, he told me, I only wish that I wouldn't have done that one show. <laughs> I can imagine that. I've been on the Today Show. Oh, God, no wonder those numbers Larry are King dropping invited, like a rock. Larry King invited me. Okay, I'll get off the I'll get off your line. Huh? I'll get off your line. I won't bother you anymore. Well, listen, have a great life. Thank you. Don't be so uptight about it. Man, he needs some serious anesthesia right now. Okay, it's a 104 at 560 WQM. Happy Wednesday to you. We're in a coma here today, in case uh, you didn't look around. It's not the anesthesia. We're just in a coma. It's the atmosphere. It's the environs. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. So nobody's going to call us about this St. Joe Hospital medical diet. I'll just stick her over here in the back with a whole bunch of other stuff that's sitting back there waiting for some day that we're in the right mood to talk about it. Here's a mobile in West Palm Beach. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing today? Great. Hey, is, is it okay if I talk about some hockey? Anything you want, sir. This is America, man. This is your moment in the sunshine. Let's <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Although after we see those poll results today, this could be the last day we mention the H word on the air because I have a feeling it's going to be devastating. But anyway. What do you think in today's paper about what happened to uh, McSorley there? I mean, what what's wrong with that guy? When he, uh, What's wrong uh, with him is that he's nuts and he was irresponsible. And I'm so sick and tired of them showing him on there apologizing and, oh, it's just not his way and he didn't mean it. Well, you know something? He did it. You know, Ted Bundy could say the same thing. I didn't mean to do it. You know, he, should have thought of, he should have thought about that before he did it. Right. But, uh, he's got to go, man. He has to go. Bye-bye, Marty, you old hack you. Bye-bye. Um, I'm from Buffalo, so, of course, I'm a Sabre fan. Yeah. What do you think with this Hasek? I mean, do you think they might... I mean, to get some scoring. Think? I think that they're going to be dangerous. I hate to say it, but they look to me like they're going to be dangerous. That game they played against Jersey the other night, uh, even though they just barely squeaked by 3-2, if it weren't for really bad officiating, they would have buried their ass in that game. Uh, they played a hell of a game. And now that he's back, even though Biron played great and had five shutouts, and that kid's going to be a great goalie, but Hasek, they play tougher for him. You know how that is? Some, uh, when he's in there, they play a lot harder for him, and he's, they're going to be tough. Even without, that, even out without a lot of scoring. I'm going to tell you the most underrated player in the National Hockey League right now, okay? I'm going to tell you the most underrated player is Miro Chatan. Yeah, he is. God, is he, he good. He's good. I mean, he he doesn't go to camp, and he still plays like he does. And That kid is a player, man. I'll tell you that right now. If the Sabres don't want to pay him, I mean, every year it seems like he – it's the last day because they don't want to pay him. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong well, with Well, you got to understand, though, they're losing their ass there in Buffalo. It's a small market. I mean, uh, you know, how can they compete? It's a miracle. They went all the way to the finals last year, and it looks like they're going to be tough again this year. They do it with mirrors, I guess, but, uh, you know, they just can't afford the payroll. Plus, they're playing Hashik uh, an arm and a leg, so, you know, there's not a lot left over there. And I, I can only say so much for the Panthers with Bury now. I mean, that guy's unbelievable. He's okay. got to be. Have a great day, pal. Thank you. And go Leafs go. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. The out of town line is that line nine working now or what? What's the story with that line? Sounds like it's working to me. Boy, what a bunch of deadheads we got in this town, man. I think Mitch Lewis had a point. Oy. If you ask me, I think he had a point or two or three. Let's do the goddamn show from Beverly Hills. Let's do it in the middle of Chinatown out there. Let's do it somewhere. Let's do it in Disney World, Disneyland, somewhere. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Out of town line is waiting eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. On a desperate Wednesday, I mean desperate. 
Here's a lady mobile in Delray Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank you very much for talking about Panthers hockey. I got into hockey about a year ago. Yeah. And I learned a lot from you. And I'm a female. And every day on the way to work, I'm going to work now. You make me laugh. I just want to thank you. Okay. Thank you, sweetheart. Bye-bye, dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. I see Boca Bryan's in the building now. Maybe we've got some interesting crap we're going to play. Man, just let's play his crap, okay? And get out of here today. These people today are killing me. They're brutal. Even that Ted David today, you hear what he said about Alan Greenspan in a box, something like that? Not that I would paraphrase, uh-huh. would I? Something about uh, putting that old big nose, whatever it was he said. Eight minutes after one at 560 WQM. The sports leader. We love the leader. Sports Radio 560. Q-A-M. Can beat that gator meat. My dad is an asshole. Yes. His big mouth is causing trouble. Yes, the old guy moves in his mind. He says to put those stand-up comic broad back in the kitchen where they belong. Now you know why I went to me. After what that schmuck did to me, you go crazy too. If that crazy Jew raised you. After all of my hit records, all that my dad ever said was, don't expect to find a job when you get back from being in love. Yes, my dad is an asshole. Uh-huh. A big mouth. Yes, the old guy losing his mind. He says to put those stand up comic bras back in the kitchen where they belong. But in all seriousness, I, I would say that we'd have to focus on my kids. Come on, shut up, you fucks for those little retards. And you'll never walk alone. Bye bye. Dean, Dean, are you dead? Dean is dead. KTEL presents number 748 of the greatest songs of love, especially for the lady in your life by Jerry Lewis. Lady, when I'm with you, I'm crazy. Yeah. So many love songs for your yeah. lady, all interpreted by the love lady, meister himself, the inimitable superstar entertainer Jerry Lewis. Yeah. And you'll get your favorite lady love song. Lady, lady, lady. It's an amazing compendium of 748 love songs for your lady, all digitally remastered and all performed by the masterful superstar, Jerry Lewis. Hi, this is Jerry, inviting you to join me on KTEL Records as we play a very special musical tribute to the lady. You'll get this Aerosmith classic. Hey, hey, who looks like a lady? Hey, hey, who looks like a lady? It's Jerry. It's and Ellen Reddy's hit never sounded better. That ain't no way to clean a lady, no way to clean a lady, no And listen to Jerry's amazing interpretation of this super hit from the King of Pop. You are the lady with my wife. The lady. You are the lady with a knife. Jerry Lewis. Oh, yeah. How about that bitch? Oh, my lady. That's 748 fabulous lady songs on 35 CDs or 120 3 track tapes. All remixed in glorious models from the original cassette masters. And it's a collection you'll share with your friends will love and your lady will never forget. It's all yours for 17 easy payments of only $32.95. And it's only from KTEL Records. You can tell it's Kate Tell. We yell. 116 at 560 WQM. So what did he say? That women are basically just a receptacle for his testicle? Uh-huh. Something like that? And you notice there was no big furor about it because nobody cares about Jerry Lewis anymore. Thank God. That's one good piece of news. Nobody cares, Jerry. 5670560, oh, pound 560. In fact, I think most people are waiting for him to croak for emphysema would be good. Here's a mobile in Tamarack. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, I, uh, Neil, I just wanted to uh, tell you, I happen to be one of the, a few Christians probably that listen to your show that absolutely applaud your attack on the church. I yeah. really appreciate it. Good for me. I cannot find uh, error in your observation. There's nothing worse than intolerant assholes, intolerant, obnoxious assholes that want to dictate to everybody else how they should live. Absolutely. And I really appreciate if you keep it going because it's just Okay, thanks. And I guess that God just interfered. He just got on his phone line. He works in mysterious ways. God got on his cell phone line and <laughs> like that to him. How do you like that, sir? I'll see you down below, okay, pal? I have a burning desire to see you soon. 567 oh, 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Don't forget our very important poll today. Maybe Eric will fax us over and let us know how that poll is going so far, huh? Are you a hockey fan? Yes or no? Very simple. Very easy. And the idea that there are people in this town talking about Marty McSorley and Donald Brashear on the air is so laughable to me when these people don't even know who goddamn uh, Ray Whitney is. They wouldn't know Oleg Kavasha from Oleg Cassini. And all of a sudden, they're experts on Marty McSorehead. Yeah, right. Likely story. Well, we saw it on ESPN. It was disgusting. Yeah, okay. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Mobile in Boca. Hey, Neil. Uh, I used to play youth hockey. Many years ago, probably about 18, 20 years ago. Yeah. And I went up to uh, Port Hope, Ontario, for Roger Nielsen's hockey school. And I thought you'd get a, a, a laugh out of this. One of the guest uh, players to teach us kids was Colin Campbell. Colin uh, Campbell. Uh huh. He got in a fight on the ice with one of the other players. Yeah. It was, uh, I guess, somebody from, uh, I think it was uh, Minnesota North Stars at that time. Yeah. And now uh, Colin Campbell's enforcing the, uh, I, I believe, what, the penalties in the NHL well, right what, now. What does that mean? Because he once got into a fight in a hockey game? What does that mean? Well, not in a hockey you, game. You know, he got you, a hockey school with... Uh, oh, in a hockey school he got into a fight. Yeah. I heard he got into a fight with Gary Bettman in the elevator in New York. Really? And that's what I heard. That's what I just said. He was a nasty guy. Remember, he just broke out. They, they well, then he, should be an, and... then he should be an expert on it. That's good. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. I think this is the last edition of the Neil Rogers Show for a couple of months. I think I'm taking some time off, waiting until this audience decides they want to make a comeback. This is it, It's getting to be too ponderous for me, man, too ponderous, begging and squeezing and pushing and pleading. Kind of just, uh, Mitch Lewis was right on target, man. Roy! He had his thumb on it. Here's a mobile in Homestead. Hello. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, first time caller. I think you do a great job, Ian. Um, I wanted to talk to you about that three-day diet. Yeah? Um, well, I broke my spine in 1978. They put me on that diet in the hospital, and uh, I lost quite a bit of weight. But I just put myself back on it now because I have to do maintenance on my weight, and I only lost a few pounds. But it, I don't know. It's just not not the same. I guess it only helps if you're in the hospital. Yeah, when you're in the hospital, you'll lose weight like crazy with or without any special diet. With the food that they give you, you'll lose weight like uh, you're on a Karen Carpenter diet. Yeah, I was in traction for almost 12 months. Yeah, that'll do it. And uh, I lost a little over 70 pounds. So, but I gained it all back in 10 years. Yeah, there you go. Okay, pal, <laughs> good luck to you. Hang in there. Anybody know what he just said? No. No, he said don't go to the hospital because it'll make you sick. Five six seven oh five sixty pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Eight, oh, look at that. Here's a call from Fort Myers. I can't believe it. Hello. Neil God. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. By the way, the vote is 34 yes, 17 no. Uh, for the hockey question. 34 hockey fans and 17 are not. That's uh, That surprises me. I thought it would be like 100 no and uh, 2 yes. <laughs> well, the 32 don't know what they're talking about. But oh. um, well, I'm not, We're not asking are they knowledgeable hockey fans because if that were the case, it would be oh! pretty weak, pretty weak. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just wondering. Like I heard um, it was maybe a little over a week ago I was listening to Bob and Tom. Yeah. And they were talking about a story about that uh, football guy, the high school football player in Texas. Did you hear anything about that? No. The school board in Texas, the guy was like a D student. What they did is after he – they went back a semester after he graduated and did away with the letter grade D so he could get a scholarship to a school. Yeah. So, I mean, I just think that's amazing that you do – they went back. But, and, but this was in Texas. Yeah. Well, don't you understand? This is football you're talking about, man. It's more important <laughs> than anything else in Texas. Just ask George W. He'll tell you. Yeah. I just thought that was amazing. I didn't know if you'd heard about it or not, but well, 
sure gives me hope for the future, man. Exactly. Of the rest of the world. Have a great day, pal. Okay. Arriva Dirch. Five six seven eight five oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. One hard boiled egg, one slice of toast, and a half a banana for breakfast. See, with me, a half a banana just doesn't cut it. You know. You know what I'm saying, Miguel? Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Good morning. I mean, good afternoon. Good, what, uh, good, good evening. The first one, uh, what do you think about the lethal injection or the new death penalty uh, procedure? I say that? it's great. I say when in doubt, stick it to them, baby. Just line them up. All right. Line and, them up. Uh, Fry their ass. Give them the juice. <laughs> in fact, bring OJ back and let's give him the juice. And uh, second, a shameless request. Since I drive in a 995, can you play the... I ninety five Apple phone. You know something? Thank it's you. been a coon's age since I played that thing, you know what? Yeah, but I love it. Okay. Take care, man. You got it, man. Stop. We haven't played this since before Jesus was a was a, a fetus, you know? You think Jesus was ever a fetus? No. Man, you think he was born whole? Don't Horn stop with those whole jokes. Oh man. And I can't if corn wins any Grammys, they're gonna really be pissed off because they suck. You know what I'm saying? No. Well, I was driving down I-95 the other night. Somebody nearly cut me right off the road. I decided it wasn't going to do any good to get mad. I wrote a song about them instead. It goes like this. Were she born an asshole? Yes. Or did you work it your whole life? <laughs> Either way, it worked out fine. You're an A-S-S-H-O-L-E And don't you try to blame it on me You deserve all the credit You're an asshole tonight You were an asshole yesterday You're an asshole tonight and I've got a feeling Yes. I told her I thought you were an asshole. She said, yeah, I think you're right. Yes. And all your friends are assholes. Because you've known them your whole life. And somebody told me, you've got an asshole for a wife. Are you sure? Were you born? Well, congratulations. Get a life. All right. Excellent. Boy, that sure was good to hear that again, wasn't it? I think another two or three years might actually play it again uh-huh. someday. Anyway, here's the final results from yesterday's poll. Boy, we had a lot of votes, 409 votes. Would you approve of spending tax dollars for a new baseball stadium in South Florida? I want you to listen to these results very carefully, Beefo, because I know you're listening morning, noon, and night, even between those 85 different bogus uh, TV shows that you're doing, Beefo. Before you get before you get into bed with John Henry, the results are... I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Yes. 43 votes. That's 10.5%. No. 366 votes. That's 89.4%. Oh, said, no. Absolutely, positively. No. Way Jose. How do you like that? Talk about overwhelming. Talk about... I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Exactly. 
126 at 560 WQAM. The out-of-town line is open, 877-785-NEAL, 785-6340. Wake up with the first team. Joe Rose, Jeff DeForest, and Steve Goldstein. No. Weekday mornings at 6, only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Uh, I have my nose up Neil's ass. Good morning, graveside. I'm six feet below, like the dirt up above, and there's dirt below. Yes. Good morning, grave side. I'm no longer alive for the time being. I'll be taking a dirt nap in a bar. Go ahead and chew me, this song's a piece of to me, I know it's low. <laughs> My other hip was only from the prime of this king's roadie, a film no one knows. If you need me, you don't got a clue, any father, I'm right here underneath your feet. Good morning, brave side. It's just when you die. Oh, I won't see him no more. Poor Oliver, he's dead. How do you like that? Uh-huh. 132 at 560 WQM. Do you think anybody in this town, who's, uh, do you think they ever saw Oliver and um, Marty McSorley together, maybe? Uh-huh. Same person. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's Miami. Hello. Let me say it again. Here's Miami. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I used to live down here in uh, 85 and I moved. I was wondering what happened to all the radio stations down here. Meaning what? They're all beanhead music. What happened? Yeah, when, because when there's it? like two companies own every radio station, and that's what happened. What happened to WGBS? When did it go off? WGBS, about 1852, just before the Civil War, a few years. I turned it on. I can't even understand it. What happened? Yeah, Radio Mambi. Well, don't you know where you are, sir? Yeah, I know where I'm at. In a foreign country. Didn't you bring your passport? Right, and I don't blame you. What happened to, uh, yeah, what did you change your show for? What does that mean? Before you used to do uh, interviews. And yeah, stuff. I used to what do boring. I used to do boring crap. It wasn't boring. Boring terminal crap. What was so boring about it? Garbage. It was terminal. It was puke inducing. It was it was radio for uh, dead people. Yeah, but at least it was a real station, and you had. Uh, no, it was not. It was not a real news. station. It was a station for dead people. Our our immediate demographic was death plus ten. You're talking about W Snooze. Talking about WN, uh, WS. Yeah. yeah, W Snooze. Rest in peace. We have a tombstone for them. They're, hey, listen, Abe Lincoln's got a bad headache, pal. Okay. Take two and call us in the morning. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's Homestead. Hello. Homestead. Hey Neil. Yes sir. How you doing? Okay. Uh, I tried out that diet that uh, you're uh, been reading about. Yeah. And it works. I lost about um, fifteen pounds in you about three the, weeks. You mean the low fat high fiber diet? No, no, the one that you were talking about. You didn't like beets or something? Oh yeah, that one works. Yes, it does. You lost how much? I lost 15 pounds in three weeks. That's not bad. And, uh, you know, if you don't cheat the next four days, yeah, you'll do good on it. But, uh, you know, the potential of losing 10 pounds a week, you know, it's there. Sounds pretty exciting. Yeah. I'm going to go to the store this afternoon and stock up on beets and saltines and the hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> it's not bad, really. You spar for three days, but yeah. uh, uh, the next four days, you know. Yeah, you at, least if you get, at least if you get the results. If you can get the results. Oh, it's the results. Believe me, the first, the, at least the first four days, you'll drop at least five to eight pounds, guaranteed. Okay. Yeah. I'm on it. All righty. Thanks. Bye. There you go. There's the voice of experience. He lost it. <laughs> 16,000 open lines here with 25 minutes to go. Boy, it's going to be a real, real test of this audience to see if we can get up to 2 o'clock in a Hank Goldberg show. 5670560, oh, pound 560. On the AT&T wireless line. Yeah, but you don't understand. Everybody's talking about Marty McSorehead. No, we're not. They haven't got any idea who that is. 
Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Neil. Good yes, sir. Uh, it was good to hear your poll that people were totally against putting up the money for the stadium today. They are vehemently opposed. They are psychotically. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Overwhelmingly opposed. There isn't a chance in hell that well, they're going to build no, I, a stadium. No, I just wanted to call and agree. I didn't get to, I didn't get a chance to participate in the poll. But you know, Henry's putting out a uh, you know the baseball's a business today. Henry's putting out an inferior product. He wants people to support it. He's not putting out a good product. Right. He's putting out a crap product. Crap product. So why the hell should we sit around? In like addition to which, he lied through his teeth. He bought the team and he came on like the big hero and hey, I'm not Wayne. I'm I'm not a prick like that. And if you don't build me a stadium, I'll build my own. And then that business about build his own and the story kept changing and changing and changing. And oh, it would only be twenty five thousand seats and we couldn't be competitive. And who wants that? And now he's not even talking that crap anymore. Now it's well, not if we're going to build it, but where are we going to build it and whose tax money are we going to steal? Of this course. guy's got some chutzpah, man. I'll tell you. Of course, all these guys that own ball clubs, bottom line is they're greedy bastards who want to put as much money in their pocket as they can. They don't give a rat's ass about putting a quality product on the field. Then they turn to the fans and then try to question fans' loyalty. Yeah, well, well you're going to see. They're, they're, nobody is going to build anybody any more arenas or stadiums in this town ever again. Good, Believe, mark not. that down. They can take all their teams and get the hell out for all Exactly. Life, they can. <laughs> right. All right. Thanks, Bill. And have a great day. You too. Yeah, but Defo likes John Henry. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's right on your level, Defo, okay? A putz. You look up putts in the dictionary, you'll see Beefle and the John Henry are together. Even Geldy was in here saying that this morning. He said, well, what happened to Beefle? He's become a real putz. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil, yes. it's pretty sad when Geldy is graded higher than, uh, than Beefo. Yeah, what is that getting back, you? Getting to another thing, that guy that called before about the stamps, I got a better person to put on a stamp, Al Goldstein. Yeah. But as, as long as it's a crack and peel, not a wicked stamp. Yeah. Take it easy, guy. I hate the Irish. Okay, I'll calm down. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's a call from Long Island. Hello. Long Island. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, the McSorley thing the other night. I've been a Ranger season ticket holder 30 years now. Yes. And you reminded me, if you remember Ted Green, yeah, in an exhibition game. Yeah, they showed him on there last night talking about that, and he says he's still suffering from the effects of that. Right. That's right. what it made me think of. It was horrible. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've been a <coughs> season ticket holder many years. Yeah. Uh, I just haven't seen anything like that, and it's a uh, total sham. It is un it's unacceptable. It's, it's no different than walking up with a baseball bat from somebody from behind and trying to uh, kill him with a blow to the head. He could he could have killed him. Right. And better Campbell. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, if Gary Bettman and the league had any balls, if these people had any guts at all, they'd kick his ass out of the game. That would be the end of Martin McSorley. Definitely. wouldn't see him anymore. But Campbell was the worst coach we ever had. Now he's giving discipline out. Yeah. That I don't see. Well, maybe he's in the S&M. Yeah, horrible. Okay. Thank you, Neil. Good luck, pal. You'll need it. Your team blows. 22 before 2 at 560 WQA. You're looking for glory holes. Well, I never thought I'd find the kind of ride that I've been tooling around in today. Now it's a classic set of wheels fixed up the way a brother would like it. Now with the key to shine and in the drip is cold and it dies up to my seat. I got a can of liquid cherry, yo. Aw, oh, baby.
on my back seat, you'll find the shine. It grab it, smell like lime. That's my coffee shine. It's too, because I've been washing it with all the roll. The Harmony Mix. Coconut, Kermada, Jerry, Jerry, you be kidding me. The Harmony Mix. Microscopic wheels rolling over speed bumps and too smooth. The Harmony Mix. Fresh for law and dear, you'll be fancy to me, baby, too. Okay, 145 at 560 WQM. Today's poll, are you a hockey fan? Pretty straightforward, simple question, right? Uh Yes or no? It's as easy as that. So far, 69 votes. What an interesting number, huh? 69 votes, 47 voting, uh, and 22. No. How do you like that? So two-thirds. You turd. So far, say they're hockey fans, George. How do you like that? So Rimmer's doing the next vacation week? No, Rumor's, uh, he can't do vacation on this show. He's going to be doing the morning show, permanent. That's the rumor I'm uh, starting. I don't want to make default paranoid again, but a lot of us are pushing real hard to get Rumor on that morning show. 5670560, oh, pound 560. Uh, that's only temporary till Bob and Tom. Here's the sunrise. Hello. Okay, nice talking to you, too, asshole. Here's the mobile in Jupiter. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. Um, I got an analogy for South Florida. It's almost like the plague. It just keeps getting bigger, and the assholes are getting bigger, and there's more of them, and it's expanding, and it's moving north, and I don't think we're ever going to get away from it. Uh, you can get away from it. Yeah, eventually, yeah. Most of us don't. I really enjoy your show, and one thing that gets me is, is the people that call, and they do have a topic that they want to talk about, and, and then you question them. You say, well, how do you feel like that? And, and they can't even answer you. Well, 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 like yesterday with the guy with the people working without the licenses, that they're, you know, he said they're giving the blacks. Right, and, I asked him. And, just get, and, get, yeah, get, and he's like, like ew. ew. Yeah, right. You know? And, ew. Um, yeah, right. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And and also with people calling you, and well, Neil, where do you go to Amsterdam, and where do you stay, and what, what hand do you eat with, and how do you attack the buffet? Yeah, which and hand do you wipe your ass with, and uh, you blow your nose, you blow this. I mean, uh, what, talk about lifeless. But then again, you got to understand where they live, and the, it begins to all fit in. They're like a bunch of lemmings, you know. And you know what? Why don't they go out and experience it for themselves? Yeah. Take a chance and do mm-hmm. it. For hey, I then they wouldn't be sitting around watching who wants to marry a multi-billionaire and uh, whether she's going to be on 2020 or uh, Inside or Outside Edition. Who gives a flying crap about those boring people? Oh, exactly. And, you know, everybody likes to do different things. You know, I'm going to the Keys next weekend to do fishing. That's what I like to do. I'm right. going to go there. I'm going to have a good time. And you know. Some people like it, some people don't. Hey, it's Some people like going to other places and doing uh, anybody they can. I mean, whatever, you know. Exactly. You know, the more the merrier. Neil. Right. Okay. Have, have a great day, one. sir. God bless you. I'll pray for us, pal, because in this town, God only knows we need it. Father O'Toole. God. Right. 5670560, oh, pound 560. Here's uh, North Miami. Hello. North Miami. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Boy, this phone is just uh, the best. Terrible. It's absolutely awful. Horrible. It's just the worst. I can't understand that. And they put a brand new one here. We do not have as many problems with the lines as we used to, but this particular phone, you press a button, and you could wait like a half a minute before the other person can hear you on this thing. Is that nice brand- going, Greg, you jackass. Is that brand new second-hander? Yeah, brand new from uh, the pawn shop right up on 441. Second-hand road. Buford & Sons, liquors, guns, and the phone systems, yeah. Hey, what are your thoughts on uh, Jack What are my Ramsey? thoughts? As a uh, color guy. On who? Jack Ramsey. I know you don't watch uh, basketball. He's an old guy, I'll say that. Well, there's no doubt about that. I, know, I, I really couldn't tell you. I mean, you know, really listen. the only thing I can tell you is that Eric Reed uh, was, <laughs> well, one, no, seriously, one year he was really good when he stopped talking through his teeth, and I made mention of it on the air, and as soon as I mentioned it, he started doing that again, and I just, I can't stand that. <laughs> I can't stand affected guys who talk through that 707, you know, that kind of crap. It makes me sick. And I do like hockey. It just, uh, I'm priced out. I don't, I don't blame you. You know? Okay, now. Like Say hi to old Dr. Jack. Take care. Celebrating his 108th birthday. Let's hear it for Dr. Jack Ramsey, okay? Oh. Yeah. Never stole a freight train. He ain't no Dave Halberstam, by the way. There's a good guy for you. My good close buddy, Dave Halberstam. Did Michael Mayo ever apologize to him, by the way? No. And let me tell you, Beefo, I thought it was bad yesterday, sucking up to John Henry. But sucking up to Greg Kotex today, man, I can't believe what I'm hearing these last couple of days. What's the story? He must be looking to make a loan to hit on somebody for some cash. He must have had some really bad days at the track, more so than usual, because, boy, suck it up to Greg Kotex this morning. What a suck-up job that was. Yeah, even a little dog was saying it. The little dog who's uh, quoted every other day in Josie Lambie's comment about, he, I want to testify by the parliaments. We got that record, Mocha Brian? I want to testify by the parliaments, one of my favorite all-time records. 
Yeah, let's dig that up for the little dog. He wants to be testifying in there that uh, this bitch did this and this bitch wasn't so great. But uh, this one told him this and yada yada yada. And Cecil was just he was just looking around. Yeah, just like a shopper in a goddamn department store. No thanks, I'm just looking. Right. Here's Miami. Hello. How you doing? Okay. Well, that was good. That was like right away. How that happened? I I have no idea. I heard you and you heard me. It was like a miracle, like a real phone call. Well, it's a big beep, man. But anyway. Have you gotten together with Paul from Cameroon yet? Uh, we're working on it this weekend, I think. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Paul shows up at Seminole Indian this weekend. Hey, I want to talk about, you remember the Miami News? Yes. Uh, you can track, I bet when that paper closed down, the decline of the quality of life in Dade County, I think, went with it. I mean, if that, if that was the stepping stone, right, when that paper ended, yeah. and then you look back 15 years from there. That's a good point. Every year, I mean, the, Her- the Herald's the worst. I mean, I hear you, but... When I do read the Herald, which I do probably every morning because you don't have a choice, right? Um, can Dade County do anything without a scandal or screwing something up? No. I mean, planting trees. I mean, today was the sewer. They couldn't put the sewers in. Their three million dollars lost money. They lost all those trees. They build an airport tower at the airport. They can't see out of it. Mm-hmm. It, it. Does this happen in every other town? I mean, I you know. I, I will say this much: when you get on a plane, any other airport, you you can be fairly certain that there's not going to be any hand grenades in the overhead compartments. <laughs> at least Miami's unique in that respect, you know. Yeah, but I, I tell you what, you're absolutely right about this town. Growing up here all my life and watching it change, I, I don't know why people would come down here. And I, guess I, I, I can't, I can't imagine being part of any ethnic group or any uh, group of people who would say, "Oh, we made Miami what it is today." In fact, I'd, I would, I'd be, I'd run if anybody said that. <laughs> don't blame me. I had nothing to do with it. Well, that, that speaks volumes right there. Yeah. Have a good day. And back to you, sir. I'll see you in a little uh, whatever it is. We got a little Havana. We got a little uh, Egypt. Little well, Lemon City. That's my favorite. Lemon City. You know what Lemon City is? It's right where we used to work practically. We got North Bay Village, and on the other side, when you cross Biscayne and 79th, there, that's Lemon City there for oh, a few blocks. Oh, no idea. Yeah, where the INS building is there, 79th and Biscayne, and the old Pussy Cat, which is now Club Madonna Schwarzer or whatever that thing is. And it used to be the 8,000 Club and used to be uh, that Danish uh, Prince Hamlet restaurant and Junior's. Oh, my God. There used to be so many great places. You'd walk in the door and they'd say, Grab my Junior, honey. At Junior's? That was, what a great deli that was. That used to be ama- It's amazing, isn't it? What a fancy schmancy place that used to be part of town. 79th and Biscayne. And then all the Schwarzers moved in. Oh, I'm sorry. Just like uh, in Detroit, so all neighborhoods in Palmer Park and Palmer Woods. I talked about this on the air before, many, many a time. Uh-huh. Yeah, changing hoods. In fact, John Rocker is going to write his autobiography. It's called Changing My Hood, or Washing My Hood, or something like that. But boy, why is it when the Schwarzers move in, everything turns into a toilet, huh? Not that we're racist or prejudiced. We just would like to live, uh, you know, in a nice, safe, neat, to clean place. Where uh, people are coming. Just ask Sonny from the market. How's he doing? Seen him lately? No. No. Do we have that cart? Where's the cart? Wait a minute. Like I said, I'll find it tomorrow. I can't find it. Poor Sonny from the market. What a great area that used to be. And what was the restaurant up there by uh, IOD? The one that they were rebuilding and rebuilding? The one that used yeah, to be like a bar mitzvah hall? hall? Yeah. It was uh, Larry's for a while, Larry's or something? No, like no, that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the steak. Was it the place for steak? Was that the name of that joint? One of them, yeah. Joey Carr's place. Joey Carr? That was Joey Carr's place? He used to advertise. Oh, he used to advertise. Oh, yeah, dining and dancing. Yeah. Oh, Joey Carr. You know something? The Miami News, and since we saw the last Joey Carr spot... Since then, Miami's gone right in the <laughs> trapper, okay? If we could just bring back Joey Carr and his brother uh, Moishi Shapiro, whatever his name was. And how come the one guy's name is Carr and his brother's name is Shapiro, huh? Ever wonder about that? Oi! 154 at 560 WQM. Only one South Florida radio station has the hammer. <laughs> and you're listening to it at Goldberg. Weekday afternoons at 2. Sports Radio 560 QAM. You got any dental floss? Hello. I'm Linda Tripp. Recently, I had $30,000 worth of cosmetic surgery done on my face. People have been asking me lately how I feel. Well, to tell you the truth, I feel great. I feel like I could touch the sky. No more dark circles underneath these beautiful eyes. 
People compliment me on my brand new nose. I put my hair in pretty pink ribbons and bows. Yes, I, cause I'm a sexy woman since my new surgery. I think I'll have the judge over for dinner and tea. I'll turn my head, he'll feed me grapes, and then we'll burn those silly tapes. I could stand to lose a little weight, but I feel great. All right, 158 at 560 WQM. Today's pool, and get to that while uh, you're a PC, somebody else's PC, hop on it. Because we got the uh, votes are pouring in. We got 107 votes already. Can you believe that? Are you a hockey fan? 67 yes, 40 no. So now it's closing up, you see. Now it's starting to, like, uh, get a little bit tight. And the vote result, too. 62.5% say yes, and 37.3% say no. no. And who the hell is that Marty McSorehead anyway? We don't care. 5670560. Oh, How come I'm giving the numbers out again by habit? You see, once you get started with it, you just can't stop because uh, it's desperate. Here's a mobile in Weston. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. I, I remember, uh, uh, do you remember Tyler's Restaurant, Gallagher's Restaurant? and uh, Remember Little Gallagher's? River? Remember Little River? That's still there, Morningside? No. Yeah, okay. Well, the same area as Lemon City. It used to be people. great. Yeah. It used to be a fancy, schmancy, classy part of town with great restaurants and uh, people with some money. Well, I used to sell the Miami News on the corner of Biscayne Boulevard and 79. Oh, Street. my God. When it was a dime. Right. Yeah, but I, I didn't call you about that. I called you about this Bush-McCain race. Yeah. They're painting this McCain as a moderate, mm-hmm. and he's uh He's no moderate. No, he's an ultra-conservative. Let me say it again. His voting record is every bit as conservative as 